Welcome, everybody. It is the H3 Podcast. We are here. It is Friday, baby. Woo. Yes, yes, yes. Join our, uh, today's episode is sponsored by Honey and Native, who we love. And today we're joined by the elusive Anthony elusive. Fantano. And I say elusive because <laughs> we've been trying to get you on the show for a long time. But right. I'm happy to see that, that you're out here in L.A. And we're making it happen. And we're, it's nice to finally meet you in person. I know. We're, we can touch Cheers, each other. Bro. Yeah. Can touch each other for the first now, time. Now we were ju- now we were just talking before we went live, and I actually wanted to follow- ask you an update. Yeah, you eat one meal a day, just lunch. I, I eat lunch and dinner. I skip breakfast. Okay. Well, bre- breakfast is usually just like a, lo- a lot of tea. Just a lot of tea. Just a lot of tea. Just a lot of green tea. Mm. Yeah. And so, um, okay, so you're doing two meals, so that's not that interesting. Yeah, kind of doing. Actually. Yeah, yeah, two meals and then kind of snacking throughout the day too. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Good. Yeah. Wow. All right. Yeah. Off, off, I'm, very, I'm off just, to a riveting beginning here. Yeah. I'm re- I'm reinventing the, <laughs> the, 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 the meal plan. Yeah. Well, yeah. some people say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but other people say it is not. Your thoughts? I'm one of those people. <laughs> I guess I'm one of the people that say it isn't. There it is, guys. All right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> That's a wrap. Anthony, of course, I'm sure many of you know, uh, is a music reviewer here on YouTube and... I don't even want to necessarily blow smoke up your ass, but I don't know that there's another music reviewer today who has the, I don't, I don't know if influence is the right word, but like the pres, the presence, right? Mm. The respect. Mm. I've worked hard for the respect. What little there is. There's a little, a little right. but I've, I've worked hard do, for do, it. Do you agree with that statement? Um, generally speaking, yeah. I, I often don't get the chance to take a whole lot of time to sit back and think about everything that I've accomplished yeah. over all this time. There was actually a, a viewer of mine that DM'd me this morning and said something like, I'm pretty sure you've reviewed over 3,000 albums since you've started the YouTube That's channel. That's crazy. And I've said, are you serious? And he said, well, since about 2009, 2010, you've been, you've been reviewing like about five albums a day. Mm-hmm. I mean, a, a week. Mm-hmm. And I looked at my YouTube on my main channel, uh, you know, video count, it says it's around, it's just under 4,000. Damn. And, you know, I even sort of lowballed it a little bit and I did four times, you know, 52 for, you know, uh, so many years since I've started. And um, yeah, I mean, it came out to just uh, around like under three, three K. So if you're reviewing that many albums and you say you do about five, four to five a week, four to five a week. So how much time do you think you need to spend listening to an album before you feel like I can judge the quality of this? I know for myself that sometimes I listen to music and the first few listens, I'm not into it. And right. I'm sure that's a common phenomenon, right? Yeah. And then as you listen to it more and more, you, you, you like it more. I don't know if that means it's better or you're just more familiar with this. So much, so much enjoyment with music generally has to do with familiarity and right. recognition of patterns, right. uh, be they melodic repetition or rhythmic repetition, whatever it is. And sometimes, especially with genres or styles of music that are foreign to you, you do need to kind of revisit with them and listen to them a bunch of times before you get into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you feel you're able to do that though, if you're reviewing basically one album every day and a half? I I would say yes, especially considering that like, there's a pretty narrow view, or or at least to me, uh, a narrow view of popular music genres that I'm reviewing week to week. I mean, Mm. you know, no matter what it is I'm covering, it's pretty much guaranteed to either be a rock, pop, metal, hip hop, album, uh, maybe an electronic record, maybe a jazz record, something like that. You know, as long as it's within those confines, I'm pretty comfortable with like, you know, what I'm hearing and where everything is at, how things musically or compositionally are operating. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes if I'm sort of listening outside of that, Uh, or if I'm listening to something that's super avant-garde or experimental, or if maybe there's like a really huge, uh, out there, deep layered concept to a record that I'm reviewing, I'll probably need more time with it. You know, maybe a couple of days. I see. Yeah. And, um, um, actually we have a special guest here. Should we bring him out real fast? Uh Uh-oh. It's, it's, it's not, it's just Gabe. It's White Claw Gabe. He calls in every Friday. I so love Gabe. Just, yeah, you know about White Claw Gabe? I do know. Yeah. I, do, I follow Gabe on Instagram. Yeah, he's a great guy. He calls in every Friday to wish us a hap, uh, happy Friday. Gabe, what's going on with the hair? Gray or bleached? What's going on? Got my hair done. I'm going platinum with my hair, motherfucker. Platinum, baby. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, someone's getting their hair done right behind you. What's going on? That's my hairstylist. Oh, you're at the salon right now. 
Yeah. Woo. Woo. Fuck, man. Fuck. Just got my hair done heading to the batting cages. Damn, Woo. going batting in all platinum. That's what the fuck is up, yeah. baby. Because it's Friday. Because eat my pussy, spend the night. <laughs> eat my pussy, spend the night. Eat my pussy, spend the night. If you want to spend the night, eat my pussy, spend the night. That's, <laughs> yes. I do want to review that, Diddy. Um, <laughs> I, you could use a verse. It's a we good chorus. A verse in we, need a, we need a verse. <laughs> we, need a, we need some bars. Gabe, are you? do you know who Anthony yeah. Fantano is? Fantano? No. I don't think yeah, so. Sorry, no. <laughs> you're not on his radar. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> that's how we judge how famous our Someone guests are. But whether or not Someone, apologies. Somebody, Somebody, no, it's true. I reveal that he's a legend. Woo! Thank you, guys. Legend. Thank you. He's a, he's a uh, fa famous and prominent music reviewer. Woo! Can you do any music? <laughs> And Gabe, do you what's your favorite song? Maybe we can maybe we could mm. get his feedback on that. Do you have a favorite album, about, a band, or song? How about Two Life Crew? Two Life yeah, Crew. it doesn't surprise me that Gabe would be into Two Life Crew, given the content, given mm -hmm, lyrical mm -hmm, content. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I, I'm just remembering now, I uh, did a TikTok duet where Gabe was singing like a hot dog song. Okay, and, and there were. Maybe three dog, other people. Hot dog, hot there were maybe three dog. other people playing on it, and then I okay. added bass to it. Okay, afterwards. okay. So you guys are some. You guys have met in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah digitally over digitally. TikTok. Yeah. Okay, Gabe. Well, that sounds really nice. It sounds like you have a nice Friday there, and I'm happy to hear it. You know. Woo! Fuck yeah! Woo. All right, buddy. Why don't you shit in my fucking open eyeball, bitch? Shit in my, my tits. Shit in my eyes. Because Avatar bitch. sucks. It's boring. <laughs> oh, you know what? I got to touch on this. Gabe has been on a whole crusade against Avatar, and mm. I think that's such a vibe. I Why? It's, it's a worthy cause. Yeah. I'm not an Avatar fan. I did not like the first one. There's a lot of people trying to influence me to get me to watch the second one. So far, I'm on a strike. Okay. Mm. Gabe. I can't get the storyline of Avatar. I'd say it's boring. Yeah. It's boring. <laughs> Puss and Boots is the real deal. I can get with Puss and, Puss and Boots. <laughs> the cat, who on an adventure. It's more exciting. Than That's what the some fuck boring... is up, dude. We got a Puss in a Boot. Ooh, and he's got a rapier. <laughs> Actually, I heard Puss and Boots is really good. Pu uh, yeah, Puss it's and more Boots exciting too. to watch. Let me check the reviews on Puss in Boots, too, because I actually heard that was a banger. What's the Rotten Tomatoes score? That's what I'm looking up right now. Right, so we need... 95%, y'all. I'm telling you, Puss in Boots is a bop. <laughs> Meanwhile, Gabe, if you go on, go on over to Avatar 2 on Rotten Tomatoes, 77%. So the jury... Flop. The verdict is in. Gabe is right again. Puss in Boots is... The winner, baby. Fuck, baby. Fuck yeah. Shit in my boots, bitch. Shit in my boots. <laughs> Shit in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yo, Gabe. Ooh. Gabe. Shit in the ocean and then scoop it up. Because that's what, I don't know, Avatar, they live underwater, right? Do they just yeah, take human-sized shit you know, in they, the water? They, they, they live above water. Oh, that's what, I heard that it all takes place underwater. Maybe in the second one. Yeah, the second one. Isn't that right, Ian? <laughs> Oh, uh, who else saw it? Dan, he's not it. here. I saw it. Yes, uh, they, they 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 still live above the water. They just swim a lot. So do There's they more swimming? So yeah, do they, they take, go swimming quite a bit? Because they're actually much larger than humans, right? They're like ten feet. They, they are like nine or ten feet. Tall, so do yeah. they take massive giant? Humanoid shits. They do. Yeah. The there's about there's about and a fifteen swim minute in sequence <laughs> in the second act. <laughs> that that, that ain't it. that ain't right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gabe. Listen, it sounds like your Friday is going great. I want it to keep going great, okay, bud? All right. Then I say, who the fuck is Uncle Gabe? 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 All right, Gabriel. Good talking to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like that could be the. He's the best, is he not? Oh no, it's it's great. Yeah, that sounds like it could be the bridge to the 
the, the refrain earlier that he was singing. Mm. Yeah. Put them together for a yeah. remix. Yeah, and you know, I, I apologize to anyone who comes on the show on Friday. It's not up to me. He just calls in on Friday. Yeah, no, I understand. That's just it's, the way I'm it a is. guest. Yeah, yeah. I'm a guest in these hallowed halls, <laughs> yes. and I'm just I'm just operating within the paradigm that's already yeah. here before I came in. But I'm glad you know you're familiar with the lore. You know. Yeah. Like all good. So let's see here. Um, you know, we are kind of on the same watch list. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, like FBI watch? No, like the 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 neo Nazi kill list. I don't know. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Worst people in the world: Paul w Joseph Watson. Yeah. Uh, Joseph Stalin. I mean that that one I'm down with. I haven't heard from Paul in a while. I don't know what's going on with him. Wait, did something happen to him? I I I, I, I that's think it. No, I'm. He's I'm, been he's been a little dormant lately, at least in terms of like jail? You know, turn, turning up in my DMs or not my DMs, but my mentions. Yeah, no, me too. Although my mentions are so fucked on Twitter now, like I, they're right. actually on. Liter literally, everyone has an <laughs> yeah. like has has a badge. But um, so yeah, he's he's like a radical uh, right wing provocateur. You gotta uh, stop dissing the Nazis all the time. Yeah, he's down. He's kind of down with that ideology. So just Stalin, I get mm. right. I mean Hillary Clinton. I don't know if she's up there with the greats, but certainly... Yeah, like, is she up there with Stalin? I don't know about that. Not really, right? Yeah, not it's really. a bit of an overestimation. Yeah. Anthony Fantano. <laughs> I'm definitely worse than Hillary Clinton. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll give him that. I mean, how many, how many fucked up bad reviews have you done? You know? How many people have you hurt? Pro I'm you just know, it's chilling like... in Cedar Rapids. <laughs> it's my girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, so then, there's Ethan Klein, of course. That's right. me. And yeah. you're you're a second thought to me. I I, I come I yeah. come above you. I'm yeah. worse. And uh, Mark Zuckerberg is on here. George Bush. Right. Interestingly, uh, Hitler is missing from the uh, list. Oh there. yeah, I mean Hitler is missing from the list, which is kind of like a layup for the this kind of list. Uh, Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> but so there we go. When did you become like? Uh, why did all these guys hate you? Why do all these right-wing guys hate you? Because I know that's a thing. Do you talk about politics a lot? Like, what happened here? On Twitter sometimes, um, because I'm just not really apologetic about it. I mean, I, I went to school for political science, among other things, and I'm just opinionated on these topics. And, and on top of it, I think at least... I, I, I think a lot of people wouldn't necessarily see or think of music reviews as like something that is inherently political, but I mean, a lot of the artists that I review come from either an impoverished, impoverished background or they are addressing systemic issues in their music or mm. they're queer or they're trans or they're uh, women singing or you know making art about their experiences as women. And oftentimes um, uh, I have to kind of address that in the reviews to the best of my ability as somebody who obviously hasn't lived that experience. And, um, you know, and, and try to take account of, of what that means for the art that I'm listening to. Mm. And, um, and, and as a result of that, sometimes there's commenters that are like, uh, you're just giving this a pass because it's a woman, you're just giving this a pass because it's a, a, a black rapper, you're just giving this a pass because it's this or that or the other thing. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm not really, a, a, you know, hiding the ball when it comes to my opinions about those people, either in my content or on social media, because a lot of the time I would much rather not be seeing those comments or dealing with those people. And I feel like, at least for me personally, the best way to deal with that is just to be as loud and as annoying. And as you vocal. want them to leave? Yeah, yeah. I want them to yeah. fuck off and, you know, die, die in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> and, you know, but unfortunately, sort of like being public about that also means that guys like Paul yeah. can, you know, see those comments and, you know, uh, uh, and, and often will respond to them to sort of like, you know, create a frenzy among all of their little incel followers on mm -hmm. the internet. I, I also did a video about Paul once where he was like making a lot of just very misinformed, uh, you know, calls on art and a host of other things. I was actually going to do a follow-up once where I believe he said something to the note of like, Remember when Ariana Grande had like that concert of hers like bombed? Yes. Or whatever. He, he, he had made some comments to the note of like, well, how can you blame these terrorists when, you know, it's like so much of our media is just really slutty and just like, you know, That's throwing awesome. a nude women around everywhere Actually, and so I, on I, and so I, forth. Can you pull that up, that receipt? Mm. I, I It's interesting how the conservative movement in this country is getting closer and closer to the Taliban mm. as time goes on. And in fact, now they're like, you see the Taliban is like, yo, let's free Andrew Tate. 
mm. and a bunch of conservative guys are like based Taliban. Mm. So there is like a converging, they're coming together, yeah. right? Fuck uh, yes. No, there is. I mean, if you, if you kind of dial the clock back into the 90s or 2000s, the conservative movement would have never stood up for a guy who, who was essentially a pimp. <laughs> You know, and, and Andrew Tate is nothing more than sort of a lowly internet pimp. And, um, you know, uh, because of the life that he leads and how promiscuous and uh, so on and so forth it tends to be, uh, never would he be seen as sort of like a moral leader. But the culture war has shifted in such a way where uh, most focus and defense needs to go on to defending masculinity. Mm -hmm. and, and they see him as a defender of traditional masculinity, of mm -hmm. patriarchy. So of course, like they need to get behind him in order to, you know, sort of like, I, I guess, keep that ball rolling. Do you think that um, reviewing all this amount of music that's, you said a lot of it is kind of like socially aware or commentary. Do you yeah. think the music has changed you at all uh, in listening to it? Or do you think you bring your, your perspective from outside of the music you consume? Um, I think some of the commentary has exposed me to experiences and points of view that I don't think I, not, not that I wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise, but you know, uh, hearing an artist or hearing like obviously before reviewing to pimp a butterfly or reviewing sinner, get ready. I, I was well aware of, you know, things like, um, uh, you know, uh, domestic abuse within, within relationships mm -hmm. or, you know, various systematic inequities or economic inequities between, you know, white communities and black communities and so on and so forth. But, um, you know, hearing it from the perspective, you know, but, but I, like most people don't necessarily get emotionally whipped up reading that stuff in a book in terms of like statistics, you know, mm -hmm. for a lot of people, it hits home when you hear someone's personal lived experience dealing with it, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, you know, and, and in that sense, I'm not, different than anybody else. And, uh, you know, hearing it again from someone's own uh, lived experience, you know, cer certainly says something. It, it's, it, it allows you to sort of make an emotional attachment to it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, uh, rather than just sort of like looking at it as kind of like, you know, this, this large scale statistical issue. Um, but I, I guess, uh, you know, hearing it come from a more personal place, it does mean something. And so do you happen to listen to any pro-white uh, race stuff, or are you just picking <laughs> one side? Like, uh, no, I, I can't. I mean, I, I, mean I, I, guess, I guess if I am listening to biased? it, I'm, I'm laughing at it. Yeah, I, I, I guess I'm very biased. You are biased against I am biased. I, the, basically, I, I, I'll admit, I'm biased against any music that is pro-white power uh, you okay know, there you guys uh, heard it here he yeah. is a biased biased music reviewer yeah basically basically any 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 white power music i come so, across <laughs> I, I don't cover or it gets a very very negative score so does that mean that you don't fuck with country music no, th no i review quite a bit of country music. <laughs> you do because i i just noticed that when you were listing the genres you're comfortable with you didn't mm. say country music but you like country music i do like country music um i was just uh, i just reviewed uh, a record not too long ago from this artist named Adeem the artist uh, who i was really enjoying their new record uh, white trash revelry is quite good i don't know if you could uh, necessarily kind of categorize them as your typically typical country artists because they are sort of like they're they're non-binary and a mm. lot of their songs are sort of like written from the standpoint of like a queer experience mm. um and i was also listening to um uh this artist uh, zach bryant today mm -hmm. who i think is uh quite good i think he's got a great voice not necessarily like the most um uh novel instrumentals out there that i've heard in modern country music but it doesn't sound like the super corporatized bullshit that you hear oftentimes mm. uh chris stapleton i think is an amazing singer um uh sturgill simpson i like as well though i i feel like the more that he goes on uh he tends to put out a lot of records that are experimenting outside of country. <laughs> uh, it, even though that's where like a lot of his roots are, I see him really as kind of like an artist artist in terms of like, he wants to do a little bit of everything. Um, so, uh, no, I, I have no qualms with country music. I think, uh, uh, it's just not necessarily what's the most demanded among my audience. And when I do run across something that I want to cover, it's, it's definitely gotta be something I'm passionate about and I want right. to, and I want to like, you know, talk about and sort of maybe turn my audience onto. Does it blow, this blows my mind. Mm -hmm. Country music is the most popular genre of music in America. Isn't that right? Or is it now hip hop? I, I think it's been hip hop for a minute now. Yeah. But, uh, 
so but isn't like Garth Brooks like the biggest selling artist in American history? One of them. Like one what is I mean I def, I don't even know one I mean, of them. I mean there was there, there was there was there was a country boom in in the 90s that okay. I'm sure you remember when we were kids. Uh -huh. It was like all over the radio. Um and and look there there's still pockets of the country where country music is still, you know, very hot and very relevant. Um country music's not going anywhere, you know. Right. I mean if anything's happening there is uh with with more of the country music audience getting online and getting onto the internet, you're starting to like with other genres we've seen as of late. Um, you're starting to see an, an evening of the playing field in terms of like artists that are a little bit more in it for the art and are more independent and are more underground and are trying to operate out of the Nashville system um, and do their own thing. Uh, country just happens to be one of the you know I guess. Um, uh, last popular music genres to kind of do it. You know, we've mm. seen it with rock music. We've seen it with indie music. We've seen it with hip hop over the past 10 years as well. Um, you know, dudes who are basically the goats of this generation, like Kendrick Lamar, Danny Brown, so on and so forth. All of them started, you know, completely on this underground independent track, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then sort of grew up from there. Um, you know, they, they, they didn't come in industry endorsed in the way that like, you know, um, 50 Cent did when he dropped, you know, uh, Get Rich or Die Trying, you know, mm. and already had like that Dre cosign and the Eminem mm. cosign mm. and everything like that. You know, Kendrick had to drop Section 80, prove himself. Um, and, you know, 50 had his mixtape days before all of that as well, you know, but but the thing is like, it was just a different time. You know, the, the internet has ushered in a new era mm. um, of artistry, of independence. And I think we're starting to see that shift with country music and starting to see a blend of that genre with other styles as well. Cause you see these country artists working with these snap beats what some of the genre referred to as where it's just like a hip hop beat. It's just like an R and B, yeah. beat, but they're just, you know, throwing like her, you know, sort of like mm -hmm, country mm -hmm. drawls on top of it. And you're also seeing, you know, fusions with pop and hip hop from the other side, like Lil Nas X, you know, mm -hmm. like old town road and, you know, so on and so forth. So, Which was like the biggest song of the, I mean, it's, it's the longest running number one. Single, yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. Know? Yeah. And, and it's in, which is, you know, crazy thinking, crazy, crazy, but also makes sense because I mean, as an American song, it appeals to those biggest popular music genres. It's a pop song, it's a hip hop song, and it's a country song, all wrapped into one. Did we ever get any, f did, what did like true country fans think of that song? I don't know that I ever saw any opinions on that. If they like that, if they're like, this shit is um, a joke. I think uh, the, the, the song definitely had a hard time being accepted within that community uh, off the bat, because if I remember there was, um, either the charts or some institution was not taking it seriously as a country song, even though it was doing really well numbers yeah. wise, but then you had, you know, Billy Ray Cyrus come in and do like the, you know, the feature, right, on it, which right, kind of like right. opened the door for it to have that appeal within the country community, which I think was, was nice of him and also smart of him to, yeah. to do, frankly. Yeah. What do you think about country artist Oliver Tree? Uh, <laughs> Um, not a country artist I'm a fan of, but I, I, you know, I'll, Oliver Tree, I think, uh, like Sturgill Simpson, he's an artist artist and he wants to do a little bit of everything. He's got his eras. He's got his evolutions. He's, he's like Madonna. He's like a postmodern Madonna. Without the talent. Well, you know, with, without a lot and of And like things. a virgin. We don't, we don't need to list the things he doesn't have in comparison to Madonna, you know, right. but, but well, we, you... we, we can just celebrate him for the things he has in common with. Have him. you rated Oliver's albums? Uh, yeah. The, uh, his his country record and the one before that yeah so what it, do you remember what you gave them i gave his debut a seven which he was not happy generous with. and um and then i gave his country album much 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 lower well tell me what it was I, well i think it was maybe around the realm of a three or yeah two, what the fuck? if i was yeah and yeah. and frankly a seven is pretty generous that that's a high score in fantano's he, he was, world it, it was but he was still very angry about it yeah well, he's a fucking weirdo yeah i heard he's a <laughs> i was just gonna make a horrible joke I met him personally. Light was, three, he was very, even. He was very nice. Even a light three. Yeah. He wouldn't even go mid or strong on the three. No, we went light on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very yeah, light on yeah, it. Yeah. You know what I'm captivated? Oh, here. I wanted to pull this up real fast. Hmm. Um, here's the tweet. Just just to call back. Here's Paul okay. Joseph Watson. Because I, I love always to point out the depravity hmm. of these fucking, these fucking freaks. Uh, she said, I am in tears. This is utterly terrifying. There was a terrorist attack at her concert. He said, no, Ariana, what's utterly terrifying is your fans being blown up by a terrorist. Wait, I'm confused. Isn't that what she said? Yes. So what's his point? 
Yeah, what, what, is, what is the argument? What is I think it, what they're is on the, the same page. They're, they're in agreement, but yeah. yeah, he's framing it as if no. they're disagreeing. No, they're on the same... Yeah, I think you all are on the same page here, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Ariana is sad about her fans being attacked by a terrorist as well. Does he think that she's just like, I'm scared and I don't care what happens to them? Because that's reading a lot into that. Yeah, that's reading a lot into that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, let's see what he's up to. I'm curious because... Oh, Jesus let's Christ. Let's see. Oh, he's still out there. Oh, my God, is he out there? Oh, wait, no. See, that's views. No, nobody's listening to shit. Let's see. Surprise, surprise. He's hitting on gay people. The arranged reaction to Ivan Propovo's refusal to bow to coercion to endorse his LGBT due to religious beliefs. Whatever. Give a fuck. Freak. Yeah. Live in your hate. I mean, it's, it sounds like he's just pretty much hopped onto the same, you know, anti-LGBT narrative that they're all on right now. That's pretty much the whole bandwagon right now. Yeah, yeah. A yeah, while ago, a while ago, it was all immigration. It was all the caravan, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and now it's like uh, if you're an ally to LGBTQ people, or if you are LGBTQ, you're you're a groomer. Right, right. That's the yeah. vibe. Also, trans athletes is a vibe. Yeah, which, I, yeah. That's, no, that's yeah. That that was that was a song they were singing for a bit too. I really sometimes fantasize about making a conservative channel mm. and because I feel like it's such an easy grift and right. like they lay out the culture war so nice for you. Mm. I want to make an anonymous channel, don't show my face, mm. get big enough to get a contract from the Daily Wire for $50 million <laughs> and then just be like, yo, it's me. It's, it's me. It's been got me the ya. whole time. Gotcha. But it doesn't matter because I probably already radicalized millions of people and got like <laughs> dozens of gay people murdered. <laughs> I mean, right? That's what they do. Anyway, um, where were we? Uh, we were talking about country. Uh, is there any categories of music you don't fuck with? Um, I don't really review much, if any, classical music. There's like some modern classical okay. and minimalism stuff that I've reviewed before, but uh, you know, as far as classical music goes, I'll admit it. I'm pretty much like out of my depth. You know? Yeah, there's some that I enjoy, but like going about critiquing it and telling you what works, what doesn't, what's mid, what's great, what's superior, what's inferior, I, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Is there still a vibrant new music scene for classical music? I think with classical music, like with um, uh, a lot of jazz, frankly, um, the, uh, much of the scene has sort of like... I don't want to say died off. It's still there. It still exists. I mean, truth be told, like the thing that keeps any music movement relevant is that it has new young blood in it willing to try right. something new and do something different. Mm -hmm. Classical music, unfortunately, has kind of like lost the plot in terms of like making its scene translate to the next generation. Mm -hmm. And um, as a result of that, you know, a, a lot of that scene is uh, just being kept alive by either, you know, um, uh, musicians who basically study the craft and, uh, you know, various educational institutions, which is fine. It's good that it's still there as far as like, you know, an access point, like somebody should be keeping the torch burning. Uh, if it's going to be them, I mean, fine, cool. Okay. But that's not exactly like driving excitement to the genre. Yeah. You know? That makes sense. Um, so, I mean, you know, I, I guess in a way it's got kind of a PR issue, but simultaneously, uh, I think the people operating within the scene are typically purists who mm -hmm. kind of want, you know, things to maybe stay the same or focus on the same tenets and artists and pieces that have always been focused on because that that's the thing. Like if you're going to have excitement in your genre and you're going to have that, you know, younger crowd of people come in and do something different, try something different, you have to also be willing to be open to the change that they're going to bring to the table, mm -hmm. you know, which I think rock also has an issue with these days. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I think there's um, a lot of discussion among rock fans that are kind of just stuck in the past, honestly. You know, they want to talk about like Led Zeppelin. They want to talk about the Beatles. They want to talk right. about this and that. And they want to champion bands like Greta Van Fleet that, or, that just sound like a fucking Led Zeppelin cover. You don't band. like Greta, Greta. I know it's controversial. No, no I, I, I'm, I don't care for you, Greta Van Fleet. And, and, is there a Greta Van Fleek fan in here? No, I said I fucking show hated yourself. Them. I you said hate I, them. I hated them. It's one of these. That, that's boy. a hardcore rocker. Yeah. You, what do you? Th yeah. I I don't like. I don't get it personally, mm. but I know a lot of people like it. Yeah. But yeah, it seems very uh, derivative. Yeah, and you know, even guys like I mean, the um, way he sings is like, bro. Yeah, and and even guys like um, you know, Jack White, for example, uh, who 
you know, in, in a lot of ways for a long time has championed a lot of those old school rock aesthetics in terms of like garage rock and blues and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, when he puts out a record where he's experimenting and doing something different, like, um, you know, one of his recent ones where he was doing some electronic stuff or even his two sister albums that he put out recently. I mean, whenever he tries to do something weird or experimental or a little, you know, kind of like off the beaten path, his fans freak the fuck out. Right. At least some of them do. Because yeah. like, why doesn't it just sound like a White Stripes record? Or why doesn't it just sound like, you know, an old school blues record? or whatever and it's like geez like give the guy some breathing room to like mm. push the genre forward because he's one of the few people in the mainstream that's actually relevant and is a rock artist mm. and, you know actually kind of pushing things forward or being willing to take a risk or do something i mean a left field mm. Mm. you know uh something interesting a mutual friend of ours uh logic mm. Uh, you notoriously hate his fucking music. Some of it, some of it, so, <laughs> so, some of it, not all of it. And and, and so, well, okay. And, but it's it's interesting to me how you have this before you guys became friendly. I don't know the depth. friend friendly. Yeah, I don't know the Let's depth. Let's say friendly. Of your, Let's say friendly. Yeah, I don't know the it's depth of term. your uh, relationship. <laughs> but before you guys started like chatting and being being friendly right you were kind of had a reputation for just fucking hating his music so what is that like when you go from like hating someone's music and then trying to connect with them personally i know for you it's not personal right, right. but he's got in some level he's got to be like hmm. hurt I, I i know personally for me it's not really any big deal because like however i feel about your music personally has nothing to however i feel about your music has nothing to do with how i feel about you personally mm -hmm. the the only way in which i guess like we could get into that territory is if you are personally speaking a shitty person and you make songs about how shitty you are okay you know i mean thus far logic hasn't made a record about how much of a dirtbag he is and nor do i think he is one you yeah know? Okay, so it's like okay. you know uh, his music doesn't really force me to contend with his quality as a person you know i whenever i listen to his records i contend with the quality of the art that i'm listening to you mm -hmm. know be that um a record like uh, under pressure which I thought was pretty good. No Pressure, which I thought was much better. His recent Vinyl Days record, which I thought was a, a pretty good. What was you know, the grocery store one? Yeah, that yeah. was Supermarket. What did you that, get one that, that one I hated. That one, I, that one, that one I just said it was not good. Not good. You, not you, not you good. Refused. And what does that mean? When you say not good, you're like, it doesn't even hit the spectrum. Yeah, it's it's, it's just it's, basically a total non-starter. It's not even like, <laughs> like pro, it's not even in the realm of professional music. I would, I, it could be professional, but it's, it's just a non-starter in terms of like, it's a bad idea. Like, yeah. how did we even get yeah. to this There's point? no foundation. Logic doing a bad rock album with like some Mac DeMarco and Red Hot Chili Peppers impersonations on it. No, we're, we're just, we're just not Might call to. him illogical. It would Maybe. be. Oh, thanks. Zing. Zach. He's fast on that Zing. one. Boy. Thank you, Zach. Zing. Yeah, he knows Zing. me. Yeah. You know, but, but the thing Fun, is good like. Good guy though. Really nice guy. Nice guy. And, and yeah. I can respect the fact that like he. You know, look, I mean, he's made millions and millions and millions of dollars doing what he's doing. Yeah. And he could have continued on the same exact track, um, <laughs> just kind of doing that forever. But mm -hmm. he got to a point where personally, artistically speaking, he got fed up with kind of chasing after the, you know, the billboard carrot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, good for him. You know, it resulted in some records that were kind of crappy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, at least he's willing to try some different shit, you know? Here's an interesting one. Chance the Rapper was mm. huge coming up. Right. And he dropped a few albums that were awesome. Like it was Coloring Book. And then what was the one after that that was, that was, was pretty good? It was good. Acid Rap that was Coloring yeah, Book. Yeah. yeah. And after that one, there was another good one, wasn't there? I'm trying to remember, but but like those, he had he had like that mixtape era, and then the big day was supposed to be his his commercial album. Yeah, so so I find I'm really captivated by his story because like he was coming up, everyone was talking about him, mm -hmm. he was popping, and then he dropped an album that was so fucking bad mm. that literally everybody just said nah. Yeah, and he's gone. They're like, nah, bro, you're done. Yeah, he's just Is kind that... of like falling off the map, and it's it's unfortunate because I do think there's like a lot of. A lot of talent there you know but the thing is like the big day is just not really it's not a great album in fact it's a bad album but simultaneously it's it's not the album that i i think his fans wanted or were expecting you know and it's just like a big hulking mess of shit in a way you know it's like it's not pared down it's not focused there's no direction so many of the verses are bad and so many of the one-liners are corny and there's a lot of bum-ass instrumentals on the record too and um you know for whatever reason the focus that he had on acid rap and the focus that he had on coloring book 
was just kind of lost in this album that was just like a shotgun spray where nothing really landed. Have you ever seen an artist like that, though, where they're like they're on the come up and they just drop something so fucking bad that everyone just abandons them? You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's happened before. I'm, I'm like failing to come up with a laundry list. But the thing is, like, rarely has it happened as badly in that in that context and rarely has it um, happened at such a mainstream level. Pretty incredible. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, yeah I mean, sometimes uh, people kind of crash and burn. However, but with that being said, like... There's loads of artists that have dropped like records that were absolutely hated by their fan base. Kid Cudi, for example, mm -hmm, you know, he mm -hmm. dropped that "Speeding Bullet to Heaven" record, which was like his own rock attempt at a rock record, uh, which a lot of his fans hated. But he's dropped uh, a bunch of material since then that his fans have loved and received well. And you know, I, I think if Chance the Rapper still wants a career at this point. It's really just up to him to come out with more music. It's true. If he drops a good album, people will listen yeah, to it. Yeah, people you people know. will still listen to it. People turn around and, you know, try him again. He's actually put out a handful of singles since then, which were pretty good. But mm. the thing is, like, what everybody's waiting for is a record, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and there's, like, no sign of that happening necessarily. And You think it you just know. hit him that hard? I really have no idea. You know, I it's mean, it's been a while, man. It's been a while. I mean, it hasn't stopped him from coming out with those songs. Big so, I mean, it was in 2019. It's been mm. four years. I mean, everything just pre-pandemic feels much further away time-wise than yeah. it actually is sometimes. Here's Logic, by the way. He wrote this lyric about you. Feel it in oh, my Jesus bald Christ. spot, Anthony Fantano. You plaid shirt-wearing motherfucker, Ayo. Ayo, I used to hate you because you shit on my music, <laughs> but now we homies. I take your criticism and use it. And use it. Is that a good rhyme or a little corny? Uh, this whole verse is a fucking cornfield, but let's go. <laughs> See, I love that you can't, you, you even, verse you even hate the nod to you. This whole verse was like subsidized by the government to such a <laughs> fucking cornfield. <laughs> This 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 uh, was made into ethanol. Oh shit! This verse this this, fucking, logic. this fucking verse was made into cornflakes. A whole a whole a whole year supply oh, for the entire country. Oh, logic. I hope you're taking his criticism and using it, uh, as you say. I used to fantasize about murdering. Murdering. Now me. that's a that's a bit much. You know, I, he. I, I'm trying to. We we did have some phone conversations. <laughs> I'm trying to recall if. If he said that to me, or if this verse was the first time that that he that I heard that from him, and that's genuine, he told you, "I want, I wanted he, he, to kill he you." Did, he did tell me <laughs> over Dude, the phone gnarly. that like my reviews made him very upset, and that sometimes he would be writing in the studio and he'd be like, oh, "I want to say this, but what's Anthony Fantano going to think about it?" And, and, oh, I, and I literally, you're said, in his head. And I literally said to him, "Don't give a fuck. Don't give a fuck about what I think." You know, it's like I'm not I'm not saying this is like a communication to you personally, you know, um, if you feel like, you know, I, I feel like and I've said this before in videos, the artist's struggle is to whatever idea that it is that you have in your head, you figure out a way to make it manifest in real life, you know, be it sort of like a visual on a canvas or the certain sound of a beat or, you know, a musical composition, whatever. That's that's the struggle. If you feel like you've adequately taken an idea in your head that you're passionate about and you've translated it accurately to whatever medium it is that you're doing. And, and I feel like logic has, I mean, you know, I, I think, uh, I think he expresses himself pretty clearly. You know, I don't think he's a guy who's, uh, you know, has, a, has any lack of communication skills when it comes to his medium. I think it's, you know, really at the end of the day, kind of a matter of like taste, you know, aesthetically and message wise, I don't really, you know, vibe sometimes with the stuff that he's putting across because uh, again, I do think it is, uh, a little corny like in 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 this sense but uh we have a suggestion from the audience oh what is it? uh logic's debut country album called cornfield subsidies <laughs> 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 sorry logic we love you but uh don't kill anthony don't kill me please it's not worth it but you get in his head. You probably do get in other people's head. And we saw that with, from Drake in a way, which we'll get into later. Yeah, I'm also worried but about like, him killing me too. But like, in a way, you really get in people's heads. And <laughs> uh, I find that very interesting because I don't think there's other critics that have that ability. Because tr traditionally critics, they're writing and they're in Word and they're printed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, nah, who gives a fuck? Especially these days. But they got, you got clips, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah, like and that you know, hits hard. Yeah, and if, are you are you dropping a double entendre? Like I got video clips, but then I also got like uh, clips. You, you, are like a, you like armed? I'm like I'm unloading the clip. Are you armed? I'm not armed. No. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> 
I read the sign outside that this is a gun-free zone. And it is. Follow, yeah, I we, followed the yeah, rules. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're like a we're like a, a Wild West uh, platoon or platoon S- saloon. Yeah, saloon. Yeah, we, yeah. We check weapons at the door. <laughs> uh, let me continue this. He says, "Choking you to death, choking me to death, and watching from your point of view till we got friendly." Mm. So is he, I, I assume he's not saying he choked you till you loved him. Wait, choking you to death? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually, this is hitting me for the first time. Choking you to death and watching from your point of view. He wants to choke me to death, but then he's fantasizing as me watching him choking Sounds me. kinky. Yeah, it does actually kind of sound kinky. It's, yeah, it sounds like he, he wants to get off on the idea of watching him choke me. I like that. Me. He says, and I realized you wasn't ever trying to end me. I was not. One night, midnight, 22 on the phone, you said the wildest shit that solidified me to stone. To stone. Sodom Gomorrah reference? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I'm Medusa. I, 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 I just uh, looked at him in the <laughs> eye and he turned a rock. You right. said, you're really testing this theory right now. Right, I am. He's like, yo, yeah. it's, not, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, nah, fuck. You, you suck, bro. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm putting words in your mouth. Um, you said, you said I built an amazing fan base and career. That's tr- nobody debates that. That's true, undebatable. I'm successful and I'm fucking worthy to be here. Well, of course. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I feel the same way about all artists who uh, I review for the most part. You know, the, the, it's it's very rare that even if it's something that I hate and I don't enjoy at all that I, I feel internally like you don't deserve to have the success that you have. You know, because uh, over the years doing what I do and talking with the artists uh, that I have, like, even when you're making music that isn't necessarily great, I realize that in order to sort of get the success that comes with whatever career somebody has, there's a lot of compromises that are made. There's still a lot of effort and work that, you know, goes into that behind the scenes. Um, and there's still a lot of risks involved, you know, with like, you know, being such a polarizing public figure in a medium that is as hotly contested as music and put listen putting yourself out there Mm -hmm. to the degree that anyone does Mm -hmm. is like really and and even like this with this verse i mean you know for as funny as it is in a lot of ways like you can't knock the fact that like logic is putting himself out there big time and and on top of it like is Logic the only person that's having these kind of thoughts? Specifically in regards to me, probably not. There's probably other artists out there who are like fantasizing about fucking killing me yeah, when, when they're watching lot. me on YouTube. A lot. And, you know, shitting on their record Most or whatever. <laughs> but but he's he's the only one willing to admit it. True. So you have true. to like. That's true. That's a really good point. Give applause for it. I totally agree. And by the way, he called your fans a legion of fuckboy minions. Now, now, what, now here's the thing that I, that I don't, this is the thing I like least about the verse, Uh-oh. and and just and there's a lot of things you don't like. There's about a lot of it. things I don't yeah. like about it. I, I I think logic, frankly, frankly, is is a little too quick to sort of like presume <laughs> a great deal of or even most of the hate that he receives is like coming specifically from my fan base. So he's co- um, he, he's trying to do acceptance, but he's in a way coping still a little bit. A, there. a little bit. I I I, th- I think there's a bit of a misfire here, mm. you know, frankly, especially given that like you know historically speaking. Some of the biggest memes and jokes about him, like for example, the biracial stuff, Mm -hmm. I personally have not endorsed. I repeatedly, whenever I see it in like either chat on Twitch or in multiple other places, I tell them that, you know, or I say that I don't endorse those jokes. I don't think they're tasteful. I don't think they're good. Um, But isn't isn't that just a reference to how much he talks about it? Yeah, but the thing is at the end of the day, like further pushing, uh, you know, into that and sort of just making fun of him for being biracial or sort of, you know, painting him as being like less hard or less relevant or less interesting as a rapper because he's biracial. it, I think it is it's ridiculous. a big part of his, of his identity. At, at, his at, story is actually crazy. Yeah, no, for sure. Like his it, mom was like racist and his dad was black. Yeah, no, and and, and I get that. And crazy, and I understand yeah. that. You know, I'm I'm just saying, like personally, obviously, you and I know that's like one of the biggest jokes out there about him, mm-hmm. and that's not anything that I've endorsed in my fan base or have like okay. sort of, you know okay. pushed in my fan base or yeah. you know uh, uh, I guess it uh, encouraged them to engage in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, th- there's a, a lot of you know jokes about him that sort of are far outside of, you know, uh, my community of people, uh, you know, who watch my reviews and probably, you know, fall in line with a lot of the opinions that I've given of his music over the years, some positive, a lot negative. Um, you know, and, and, and I would like to think that my fans would, you know, be smart enough to not fucking 
harass the guy. I don't wish for Logic or any artist that I give a negative review to to be harassed. Not any of them? I, no. Just no, not one. Any of them. Name one you hope gets harassed. Name one artist who I hope gets harassed. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Name one artist. Just give us the green light, Anthony. <laughs> to harass <Yeah>. somebody. <laughs> um, no, I'm not giving the green light to harass anybody. Okay. All right. Nice. I tried. You did good. You passed the test. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will say about Bobby uh, Logic, I went to a show of his. You did? Yeah. I've never I, seen him live. I went with Mac. Me and Mac were hanging out a lot at the time, Mac DeMarco. Okay. And he invited us both to come out. Mm -hmm. And the audience, it was at... The Hollywood Bowl. Okay. He sold that bitch out. Of course. And the audience was crazy. Like they, his fans love him. They do. They love the inspirational thing. They love everything, right. and they don't mind that it's that it's like not good music. Right. And and <laughs> I'm just kidding. Logic. I'm just kidding. That, that's the thing, though. A lot of I'm a lot of kidding, a lot of his fans do see him as an inspirational figure. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think he does a lot for. I them. think that that's a good thing. You know, I, I like you know you can give him one thing. He inspires his fans in a positive way. Big you time. Know? Big time. It may not be, it, it may be more with, you know, his message of personal struggle more than sort of like the quality of his art. But it, it ultimately, at the end of the day, it's not a bad thing. Utilitarian, you know, speaking in a utilitarian fashion, it's a net positive. Definitely. You know? I've been to some shows where like the vibe is like fucking bad. It feels mm -hmm. like dangerous being there, you know? Mm -hmm. Like bad, bad vibes. Mm -hmm. And there, it was just a bunch of really positive young people that were uh, having fun. And right. so I think that that's something to be proud of, you know? Right. No, for sure. I'm going to think, I got to thank my sponsors here real fast. Do you want, yeah, uh, you can sit here, you can go to the bathroom. You can that's do what I'm you doing. Want. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, so do you mind endorsing uh, my products? And you know, I'm just Actually, kidding. I'm going to go to the kidding. bathroom. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to go take a piss. <laughs> Thank you so much to Honey. Yes. We love Honey so much, you guys. Um, thank you for supporting us, first of all. But Honey is such a great, wonderful product. Oh, brother. Where would I be without Honey? I'd be broke. I'd probably be homeless without Honey. Thanks to Honey. Matt, what? You don't think so? No, I just realized I put up the, uh, the wrong Honey. We need... This honey. Join show honey. Me, show me the After honey. Dark today. Show me the honey, bunny. Show me the honey, bunny. Oh my god, look at those savings. Yeah, so honey is a free internet plugin that automatically scours the internet to look for the best promo code. It's free. It's easy to install. It's a win-win. There's really no drawback to it at all. Um, and basically what it does, you shop at your favorite websites. And I'm talking fashion, tech, food, gadgets, gidgets, gizmos. Um, they have it all. Basically any major retailer. And when you add your items, you go to checkout, you're going to pay, a little button drops down and it says, Sir, add coupon, boom, you click it. And whatever coupon it found that's the gonna save you the most money, it automatically applies here. This one was something Ela bought from this website that was for buying a rug and without any preparation without any knowledge that's a 62 dollar saving you don't have to think about it dude you really don't and that's what i love about honey and what's actually exciting about honey is you can use it on your iphone now too all you got to do is activate it on safari on your phone and save on the mother loving go so if you don't already have honey, you are missing out on straight up savings. Anthony Fantano endorses and loves honey until the day he dies. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. You don't. Have to I do love honey. savings. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, but by getting yourself, uh, getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show, which let's be real, is more important than the product itself. Right, Dan? Uh, definitely not. <laughs> no, <laughs> the right. Most honey's, important thing. The honey is the most important supporting thing. Supporting our wonderful sponsors. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a win-win. Get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash after dark. That's joinhoney.com slash after dark. Thank you to Honey, and please support our sponsors. We love them so much, don't we, folks? And uh, finally, thank you to Native for all my stinky boys and girls out there. You know what Native is, Anthony? I actually got a bar of it. In, oh, yeah. endorsement. You can't yeah. even help it, bro. Yeah, sorry. We got yeah. that endorsement from yeah. the vegan king, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, native. This shit's rules, man. It's that time of year again. 
you know? Yeah, where you stink. Where you stink, and it's time to smell good. Yeah. My New Year's revolution, resolution, stop stinking, you know? So when it comes to personal hygiene, are you really making me read this? They go, when it comes to personal hygiene, I knew I had to make a change there. I don't stink because I use native products. Why are y'all putting words in my mouth? Are you okay? I mean, come on. For real, that's why I'm using native personal care products, and I do, which is why I don't stink. Every native product is thoughtfully formulated to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day long. There's actually a few native users in here. Yeah. Uh, I use the deodorant and the body wash. I use the uh, shampoo. I love it. It's great for my luscious locks. And uh, Dude, Native is great. taking over. Yeah. You know why Native is taking over? Why is that? Which is the best in the game. Oh, yeah. Nobody does it like I know. Them. Anthony certainly supports that statement. You know, I know what it's like to be the best in the game, so <laughs> right. you know, I, 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 can, I can support them in that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, send him a check, please, Native. He, he, I'm not giving him a cut of mine, but if you guys want to support him, please. You know, Native, uh, they don't have aluminum in their deodorant. Okay, that's a that's dub. True. Native keeps their ingredients list bare naked, the way I like it. With ingredients you understand, like coconut oil, shea butter, and baking soda. Yeah, I like to start my day with just splashing a whole carton of baking soda on my genitals. Just to make sure things stay fresh down there. Right, Anthony? That's how I like to start the day, too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know, it absorbs the smells. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your backing me up on that. Yeah, no Native problem. deodorant checks a lot of boxes, actually. 72-hour odor protection, naturally derived ingredients, and a smooth, residue-free application. One thing I hate about deodorant is when it leaves all those like chunky fucking white shit. I'm not down with any of that business. I like the coconut one. Oh yeah, bro. I'm rocking with that one. Fuck yeah, dude. Native also offers a variety of scents, including coconut, with new and limited edition scents being released all the time. And when you use Native, you will smell amazing all day long thanks to their long lasting scents. Do you want to smell spicy and woodsy? Or clean and fresh. They actually have a B.O. scent, which is kind of counterintuitive. Seriously? No. Oh. Sorry. Okay. Sorry, Native. Not that I was interested. <laughs> it's a B.O. scent. It's interesting. So people don't even know you're wearing it. It's like the new rave in natural products. <laughs> That's just a joke. They don't do that. But they do have a scent for everybody. Um, well, let's see what else here. They've got... Candy shop? What the police the fuck is all this shit? They got a candy shop. I, I love native because besides the amazing smell, usually my armpits burn from the other deodorants, but this one I think because it doesn't have the aluminum. It it burns? What the hell you put on your armpit, bro? The other name brands, I'm not gonna say the other name brands, but the losers. Brands. The other And ones. it feels great. I smell great. God bless. The eucalyptus mint shampoo. Oh, I see. It. Game changer, man. But here's some gummy bear, strawberry, vanilla, taffy, sour berry belt. I don't want my armpits to smell sour necessarily, hmm. but I get it. Can we hear more about the shampoo since I don't think you and I could really attest to the, <laughs> the quality of the shampoo? Do you use shampoo or you just go soap? I, 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 can, can I mention a rival, like a rival? Let's product, wait till, like, let's yeah, wait till after. We, pro the we pro probably shouldn't then, mention yeah. rival, pro rival soap. Yeah, no, no, not product. yet. Well, let's wait till it's over. And we don't believe in rival soaps here during this <laughs> read. There's no, only one brand, it's native. Uh, now is the time to make the switch from antiperspirants to native. And when you visit their site, you can discover all their fresh scents and maybe even try one out. Uh, try one of their body washes while you're at it. Boom! Feel, uh, feel and smell fresh this year with Native. Get 20% off your first order by going to Native, D-E-O, dot com slash after dark. Or use the promo code after dark at checkout. That's Native, D-E-O, dot com slash after dark. Links in the description. Thank you, Native, so much. Please support our sponsor. Smell like a fucking king, bro. I probably shouldn't say fuck. This is after dark. Can you swear? I mean, I can swear, but sometimes this, they get mad because when I say fuck and shit like that. Right. But I mean, I love their product, so thank you guys. Peace. We do. We have shtick where I, 
I do yeah, bad it's shtick, coffee shtick, reads. Yeah. It's not the, really shtick because we get dropped off. Yeah, it's this great <laughs> bit where Ethan ruins every ad. It's, it's, it's a great bit. Uh, it's funny, though. They should appreciate what I do for them. So what? what so do, you, you, do you go straight soap to the hair? or? Uh, I mean, you know, it's just my scalp, essentially. Like... <laughs> <laughs> to the hair, yeah. Um, or I mean, you have some. Yeah, you have no, some I, I, I I use a uh, I I use a Dr. Bronner's the hemp soap. You just do the whole thing everywhere. I will like I I I wash, and then I exfoliate, mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll wash again, and I just right hair. Yeah, and 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 then and then I just come out clean, and the and the skin is smooth. You know, as fuck. you know that stuff. It alarms me a little bit because it makes you tingly. That's the peppermint one. And I says to myself, I don't use the, I don't use. Okay, the you don't one. fuck with the tingles. Well, the thing is, like the peppermint one is cool, but I I got a rash off of it. See, that's what, and by the way, yeah. that's why we don't use that shit. We use native. But I mean, it gives hey, you fucking rashes. There's like nine other Dr. Bronner soaps. The the peppermint one is popular because it people like some people like the tingles. I don't know. Tingles thinks you think of like I'm getting cancer. Or something. I I use the lavender one. No tingles. Okay, just lavender. Smel just smells like flowers. There it is. Um, I found out about H3H3 thanks to Fantano's old podcast, somebody said. Mm -hmm. So I did your podcast, with, it was in... Uh, 2015. 2015. Mm -hmm. That was the first show I ever did, somebody else's show. Right. That's crazy, bro. Oh, yeah, I remember this guy, Frank J.C. Uh, Frank J.C., yeah. Frank he did, J.C. Rule. Oh, what happened? Oh, yeah, it's, pro it's probably a... Uh, you could scroll down. I, I, think, a... I think I moved a lot of those older podcast episodes. Yeah, they're gone. They're just like nah. They're they're, they're bye bye. That was at a point where I I think I think like we were, we were on like a a similar plane. With, like I was the most famous content. I was Mr. Beast of the internet around that point. I was much bigger than you. Then I had you on my show. Then you blew up seven times, and I and I I dropped off. That's not true. You're yeah. fuck. You're Mr. Music, bro. <laughs> I'm, <talking. laughs> I'm I'm telling you, I was I was get, I was doing Mr. Beast numbers. What year was that? Like a hundred million per. 2015. I was doing Mr. Beast numbers in 2015, but now I'm just a shell of my former self. I see. So it's yeah. all been downhill for you. It has. <laughs> What's Frank J. C. up to? Is he? He was like a musician, right? I for, I forget. Yeah, he's he's a producer. I I think he's he's been kind of playing it sort of low key lately. Okay. You know, wish the, him the, well. The, the internet is a, is a weird place and and has been quite unfair to him in in some respect well that's not right yeah but i wish you well wherever you are my friend they, they were they were people uh they were they were uh companies that um sort of went after him for some of his uh um like production tutorials because i guess he used like a oh not legal version of the software or something and that, that's it yeah yeah well he had he had to take some of his most classic videos down Oh, that's fun. Which were very up. popular, but and you know, and and we're actually like very good production tutorials. So I I want to hear. I'm just going to a random spot. I want to hear because this is it. so sad. Like, one. I'm I'm fucked. I can't do anything thing? to get my video back. In fact, you can. The dork ass loser. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bitching about. I think at the time there was some drama about freedom or no, not freedom. One of the. <sighs> it was prank invasion. What was the? What was the? Uh, we listened to some of it yesterday. It was prank invasion was uh, coming after you. But they were—he was part of a network that was. Yeah, and he was DMC oh, video. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned SoFlow as well. Uh -huh. YouTube was full of problems back. Dude, then it was so crazy. I mean, it's full of problems now, but you know, it's, it's sort of like a, a new host, uh, a, a new array of shitty problems. But like back then, you know, you had all these like content freedom and usage and fair use problems and issues that were just like ridiculous. The part that was crazy to me that they've now resolved. Is there was a thing called the content? I, I even forgot. Uh, MCN, MCN. Yeah. yeah. And you Multi would channel network stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And they would fuck. Everybody thought they would just straight up lie to you and say, "We're gonna earn you more money. Yeah. You gotta join us, and yeah. we'll do stuff." They don't do. They do nothing for you. They take in some cases up to fifty percent of your revenue. Yeah. Everybody was part of them. Yeah. And then the craziest part is that you couldn't leave. Yeah. They had to release you. Mm -hmm. Now there's a button on your dashboard. You could just bail at any time. <clears throat> but you you would get fucking stuck. And YouTube sends all their money, your money to them. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. No, it, it's it's true. I think a lot of people unfortunately had to learn the hard way around that time that like uh 
it's 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 not that much different than TikTok right now because there's a lot of young content creators on that platform who are being taken advantage of by you know either uh, networks or by advertisers. Uh, mm. It's kind of like pushing them into like these really kind of like cheap exploitative deals to promote this, promote that, promote whatever. Um, yeah, I mean with YouTube at that time with uh, it having you know a predominantly young audience, uh, you know again people had to learn the hard way in terms of like the contract is the contract and anything that's being promised to you over the phone, over email or whatever that is not in writing is not actually going to be offered to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You know, that exchange in terms of like, yeah, I'm giving you uh, 50% of my revenue for everything that you're telling me over the phone. Everything that you've told me over the phone may not necessarily be in the contract, but you know, you're saying it. Um, but you know, it's interesting. You mentioned uh, people exploiting people on TikTok. Hmm. I don't know who, if you know this guy, Ryan Kavanaugh, do you know who that is? Um, maybe I've seen his videos, but I don't know the name. Yeah, no, he's he's an ex movie producer. Mm -hmm. He was the CEO and owner of Relativity Media. Mm -hmm. Completely bankrupted that. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely drove it into the fucking ground. Like mm -hmm. gone, gone. Got sued and lost a bunch of money. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Now he he bought Triller, mm -hmm. uh, which has been a great investment for him so far. And uh, he's suing me. He's actually suing me for defamation. Oh, okay. And um, tortious interference, which I won. He owes me legal fees on that. About sixty thousand dollars. We're waiting. He also sued me for a copyright infringement, and he is just a predatory fucking monster. Very is ugly guy. Is this all still in progress? Yeah, well, so yeah, two of them are still going through the court. Can I get in on this? Can I say something defamatory? Please right defame now? him. It's hard. Please well, see, he actually has so low character. Uh -huh. Sometimes public figures can have such a bad reputation; it's literally impossible to defame them. Right. And he's one of those guys, like right. drunk driving. He he faked. Get, bro, I'm not even joking you. He went to Habitat for Humanity. They had a whole big party and reception for him because he was going to donate a million bucks. And he brought a big check. And then he fucking didn't give them shit. And then after, after they threw him this whole big party on video and shit, he's like, all right, I'll give you 35000 And that's all he gave him for wow. the million. So he's a fucking monster. Yeah. So again, what you're saying is like, there's nothing that you can say about him that literally would give him a worse profile. Exactly. You can't defame him because his reputation is already uh, completely dirt. You would have to say something nice about him and build him up. That could be defamatory. And then say something bad about him to sort of knock him back down in order to do that. Yeah, he's being sued by a bunch of people. He's just like so shady. Ryan Kavanaugh. Oh, also he said he wants to fuck a 14-year-old Natalie Portman. But anyway, moving on. Inappropriate relationship with a 14-year-old Natalie Portman. That's him. Uh, sorry, I do this segment where I just tell people about Ryan Kavanaugh. He launches a label with the quad. King Bach, who is, as you know, King, crush. King Batch. <laughs> King Batch, as you know, is crushing it. <laughs> Maybe he is. I don't know. I just haven't seen him in a while. Charlie D'Amelio, she's crushing it. Bryce Hall is certainly... He's hunky. He looks like a hunky it. guy. And uh, Ryan Kavanaugh. So he is moving on to big, big things. Is, is, it, is it defamatory to say he looks like a douchebag? That can, is not defamatory. That's opinion. But okay. one thing I will point out that is not defamatory because it's opinion is if you go to the website, does... Here, just type Ryan Kavanaugh on Google, actually. Uh, the second result here is a website called Does Ryan Kavanaugh Look Like Harvey Weinstein? Yeah. That's our website. Mm, okay. <laughs> it's the second result for his search page. Uh-huh. And um, if you guys want to visit that website, I'd encourage it. He, he owes me $60,900 because we, one, actually crushed his tortious interference lawsuit. Right. If you guys want to go to this website, type in Ryan Kavanaugh into Google, go to the search result, click it, and spend some time on it. But you actually, what's interesting about him, and I think you'll appreciate this, Anthony, as a critic. Right. I mean, the resemblance is fucking uncanny. What, what, what legal uh, <laughs> mechanisms are in place to make him pay you the money that he owes you? Oh, because, he, he, because his, his lawsuit was deemed uh, egregious enough uh -huh. by the judge that he awarded that he has to pay my attorney's fees. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying, like, oh, so is, is there a timeline on when he has to do that? Oh, that's far gone, far oh. expired. Got it. So, so, so what, are, need, what are the repercussions for him considering, uh, con continuing to skip we need, that? So we need to basically petition the judge, uh -huh. and if, because he's such a uh, horrible and un dishonest businessman, he owes a lot of people a lot of money. Right. So we have to get in a long line, but essentially we can get to the point where the judge can issue an order that we can, like, garnish his wages and mm -hmm. take his assets and stuff like okay. that. So... Uh, hope you've got a nice car, because I'm fucking coming to repo that shit, bitch.
Here he, but it's interesting. Now, I personally would not want a picture of me kissing Harvey Weinstein on the head. Right. Who would? There they are. Uh, best friends. That's, that's, that's a, I've never heard of the, I've heard of, you know, if, if you go on TikTok or if you go on Instagram right now, head, forehead kissies are very popular. I've never heard of the, the back of the head kissy. You give him a sniff on the head. Yeah, a back of the head kiss. A yeah, forehead kiss is one thing. But. He, got a, he got DUIs, he mm. lied under oath, which mm. that story's crazy. His, he was accused of running his Ponzi scheme. Of course, his partner later recanted that, said it didn't happen. Un, didn't pay his babysitter. He's threatened critics. Me, specifically, sent me this DM. Also, here's where Harvey and Weinstein... Brian Kavanaugh is a force of nature. Saying he's a force of nature. Force of force of nature. Not the endorsement I want. Right. But anyway, there it is. Has so he done NFTs? I feel like that would kind of... Yes, steal. he has. Well, well, of course he's well, done tri- They started the of doing... Of course. They did trip. I just, I literally just yeah. guessed. Yeah. I just guessed. Yeah, yeah. Like, right any, up his alley. Anybody with that rap sheet has done NFTs. <laughs> yeah, and so I don't know where that came from, but I like to just inform my guests. Mm-hmm. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank Ryan you for making Kavanaugh. me more aware of Ryan Cavanaugh. Yeah. I'll see, yeah actually, I, I got an email from him. He, he was inviting me to hang out. And I'm going to just respond and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to pass on that. Oh, thanks, bro. Yeah. That's it. And that's it. You know, because he's trouble. Yeah. He's trouble, man. Thanks for keeping but, on the right side of the tracks. But, and I'm not saying you're into this. He does want, he does like people to fuck it, his wife. And so he can watch. And I'm not, this is not even a joke. Oh, okay. He's got this dude, this jacked Israeli dude's fucking his wife. His name's Brad the Bull. But we don't kink shit love, on this show. Love is love. Love, love is, is love, love, and we don't kink shame on Good for them. That is a joke, by the way, and I'm not making that as a fact statement. But uh, there's some compelling evidence. Hmm. Anyway, moving on. <sighs> <laughs> Best teeth in the game, huh? Yes. I heard that you got a cavity recently, bro. I did. I got so, a cavity last year. Let me see the teeth. I've noticed you have nice teeth. Good gums. Really nice gums. Thanks. What is your brushing uh, regimen? Your uh, oral care? Twi- twice a day, especially at night. And you got to floss. 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 And uh, mouthwash. Now, do you use the string or do you use the little gadget? Um, I use the string. Yeah. Yeah, I don't use the gadget. The gadget is fucking horrible and sure for the environment, but I love it. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I, I like I like the motion of the string. I like the you. I, I get off on the motion. I think yeah. it's fun. Yeah, this is our thumbnail, by the way. I don't know if you know because I just want to tell you, I actually don't have any cavities. Oh uh, fuck, none, zero. zero? Look at this. Wow, I'm jealous. Let me see your mouth. Let me see your back. The back. Where's your cavity? Um, it's it was it's actually kind of a funny thing. It's in between two teeth. Oh, so it's, it's not in between really visible. Two, it's not visible, but was so me- but what was so messed up about it is that they needed to like sort of like wear down the inside, like the inner part of two teeth next to each other to get to it, to fill the cavity. Mm -hmm. And so now there's almost like a gap on the inside of the two teeth that have the cavity between them now, which I'm always having to sort of like chew around. You might say that your teeth have a blemish. Yeah, they do. Yeah, most Mm -hmm. definitely. I fucked up. Because the people call me the hairline king. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know, two kings coming together. Your, Your hairline's doing better than mine. So, well, you're downplaying it. My hairline is insane. <laughs> it's the best in the game. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm not competing here. I'm not competing in terms of competing, in terms of hairline nobody's. and 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 cavities. I mean, you're 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 killing me here. But your teeth. This that, is why you brought me here today. You're fine. I know I came to brought you. No, but your fr- your teeth have a presence. They're bi- they're beautiful. They, they have teeth. a good shape. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah, good yeah, shape. yeah, yeah. It's good yeah. shape. The gums are incredible. You do anything for the gum care? They're very pink. Well, I mean, you know, this flossing is also gum care. It helps prevent okay, gingivitis. Okay, okay. Uh, I don't know if you know. I was number one on Wiki Feet too for a while. Oh, okay. Until they, they I, banned I, my <laughs> my feet are terrible. Oh. My feet are. You you did you see my feet in the human cake video? Yeah. Not oh, it's been a good. while. Yeah. Oh, that's one. Speak. Actually, that's a question I wanted to ask you. That's an yeah. interesting one. Filthy Frank, of course, who <laughs> is mutual friends of both of ours. Right. I don't know if he was in that video, but obviously the human cake. Yeah. He yeah, was. he was. Okay. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. But who would have thought that Filthy Frank, the most, debu- I mean, how do you even describe would would, would, would become yeah. one of the most relevant pop artists. He's really and, popping. Yeah. And good. Yeah. No, for sure. What are your thoughts on Joji? I mean, I generally think his music has a powerful presence to it. I think his latest project, he kind of 
phoned it in. I don't I don't know what it maybe it was mm. a contractual obligation thing. Mm. It was almost like a an EP with some bonus tracks on it, sort of like being marketed as an album. But you know, every every once in a while, you know, like Brockhampton, for example, you know, they had to end out their contractual obligations with a few records before they ended the band. And, you know, the two records they just came out with didn't really sound like they had a whole lot of effort put into them. Mm. Um, you know, kind of the same thing with the Joji record. But there were some tracks off of it, like Glimpse of Us, which are really good. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think he's coming into his own as a songwriter and a singer. And it's been really cool to kind of see him go into a different creative avenue. Yeah, it's really interesting. His music videos are awesome. Mm -hmm. Love. Uh, also, also you, you, you fuck with Matt Watson? Uh, I don't like him. No, no, that's he, fine. But I like, I mean, I like, he sent me, I don't know, he's kind of a piece of shit. They sent me a chair that was really small. Uh, from what I've heard, I don't like. I'll say, I'll, I'll, I'll say I, I'm, I'm on good terms with Matt. Okay. But, but he's also kind of, you know, making his attempt at a little YouTuber kind of music balancing thing too. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's good that people in this field are, um, do, doing, doing, making some waves in the music world. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen this, um, but he got his ass fucking beat. Tampa, oh no, I saw that. You did? Yeah. I was watching in 4K. Oh, God. Because it only lasts five to five seconds. Um, no, I, I saw. This is all I know about Matt Watson is this right here. Ready, Matt? Did you? By the way, I, I'm this, I'm joking. By the way, but did you see Joe Rogan crying about how this clip? You never what, what saw it, that, what, bro? No, what, what did you say? Oh, you're gonna love this. Oh my god. I got it. Here, someone send this to me. Dude, you're gonna love this. So you uh, you watch this, you you saw I, the I Lord. did watch this. Not, and I'm aware of dad. Like, you know, I, I come from a, a, an era of YouTube. I, I remember dad from Yeah, me too. Day. Me too, man. You know, honestly, like, truth be told, <laughs> I would not want to fuck with dad. Like dad, I would like, not get in the ring with dad. Knowing his, even at the weight that I am, knowing his background, he's 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 gonna out. He's he's faster than you. You can't keep up with that speed. He's a dancer. He's, he's gonna have. Dancer. He's gonna have an he's endless got insane endurance, and yeah, also he's, he's gonna a have little crazy stamina. Yeah, and he's and definitely he's definitely he's got, got a screw loose. Yeah, yeah. Like he came on our show to promote uh, his fight against Matt, hmm. and he was just like. Um, He's, He's an like, animal. My life is a tragedy. I'm fighting for my dead girlfriend. I was like, mm. "Whoa, dude! I don't want to fuck. I don't fuck with." Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want a dead girlfriend punch. No, no, nobody wants a dead girlfriend punch to the no. face. No, but I would pity anyone who gets in the ring with him, dude. That would be a fucking disaster for anybody. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no, I like Matt Watson. He's just a giant pussy, dude. Yeah, he he didn't prep for this. He didn't practice at all. Very obviously. Like, geez, the body blows. Like, he's punching so fast. Dude, dad. How do you, you can't even keep up. Bam. Bam a lamb. This was, this, this was the first fight, and I was yeah. just like, what is this? He's not, bro? he's not even, he's not defending. He's not even really trying to hit back. Oh. <laughs> what are you, what? I was how, just like, what how, is this? How? His, his, his uh, comb over blowing in the wind. Right. Because he's so fast. Yeah. So, anyway, everybody's familiar with this. So, Joe Rogan somehow came across this fight. And I fought. why is he wearing a NASA? Yeah, like what? Yeah, is 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 Joe okay? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, the man does a lot of DMT, and at that age, I'm just not sure that the chemistry of the brain like, is like, unaltered. He, he, he's he's wearing a a, a a fake cosplay NASA top <laughs> like he's six years old. I mean, like, does he think he's actually an astronaut? He might. I mean, he spends his free time in a deprivation take on DMT. That cannot be good for your brain. He thinks he's orbiting the moon right now. <laughs> well, you'll see how fucked up he is. So he saw that fight between Dad and Matt Watson. Uh -huh. And I just need to emphasize to you that this his take right now is 100% genuine. Fuck you. This is an edit I saw that a video uh, Matt today posted. Of a boxing match between a father and a son. It made me so sad. I swear to God, it made bro. me so sad. Oh my god. Because there's this young the great kid. Joe Rogan. He looks no. like he's probably like 17 or 18. No. And the father's 42. No. And the father beats the shit out of him. No. I mean, like, no. dings him in the head and he keeps literally has him. daddy like, on his son. chest. That's your son. Well, no. And we're watching you no. beat he's your son. He's on the verge of tears. Because I get your son probably got cocky with you, but. <laughs> and he celebrates after he knocks his son out. It made me so sad. Because first of all, I'm like, that kid has brain damage now, 100%. Maybe it's just a little, maybe he'll be fine, maybe he'll get over it, but maybe you fucked him up. That can happen too. He might be depressed from now on after that. It might fuck up his pituitary gland. It happens to people. And you just did that to your son. You're supposed to like touch him up. 
You're supposed to not even hurt him. Like, slam him in the body a little bit. Like, you think he can fight? Okay, good dude. Okay, let's a little, have a little boxing match. You don't tee off on your son's face on television. It's crazy. How, was, how old was the kid? Kid looks young. To me, he looks like, you know, he could be 20. He could be 19. He looks young. He's real skinny. And the father's kind of jacked. Not too jacked, but, you know, he's fit. Jesus. And he could fucking punch. He knows how to box. And the son doesn't look like he has any idea what the fuck he's doing. I don't know what the thing was. That's like really what he's reacting to? to? Yeah, I they saw, like yes, yeah, yeah. we know this for a fact. You'll see, you'll see, like, you'll see. You guys are crazy. That You failed. Were You've you, failed as a man. Yeah, this is this, it. That's, that's oh not exactly God. what was no. happening. It's not? What is it? They're not father-son. Oh, why does it lie? It says father <laughs> knocks out son in <laughs> celebrity <laughs> boxing match. Yeah, oh, oh, my God. This is like a YouTuber thing. This guy's a YouTuber, and he's a YouTuber. Uh, I'm <laughs> such a sucker. Can oh you fucking, fucking believe? Christ. This oh, my fucking is God. the most popular entertainer in the world, and he's informing sucker. a whole generation of young men. Also, also on top of it, it's like you, you, you literally make your bread and butter off of like a sport where people like if if he's that upset about people getting their pituitary Good glands point. fucked up like you know, in in your field people get their pituitary glands fucked up all the time what does it matter if it's between a father and son you know it's like if 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 it's not between a father and son are you less sympathetic to the pituitary gland obviously yeah yeah but like, you, as but long as know. it's not between a father and son fuck up as many pituitary glands as you want you know, he's just so unstable. He's like, I was sitting there and I was crying. His pituitary gland is fucked up. Yeah, bro, no. In your personal experience. I was thinking about it. I was in the deprivation tank this morning, thinking about this video. I was just coming down from my DMT trip. Mm. I had tears come rolling down my face. Why would a father do this to his son? The pituitary gland is not self-healing, I don't think. No, I don't think it is. Yeah. Hold on, I need to, I need to hit the DMT pipe one more time. I'm gonna Google if you can heal your pituitary gland. Yeah, let's get some details on the pituitary. <laughs> <laughs> That's him exercising. <laughs> yeah, he's such a fucking meathead <laughs> bozo. <laughs> also, I love how he goes. Why do they lie? <laughs> you dumb idiot, fuck. Ugh, I love that for him. Anyway, I'm surprised you haven't seen that book. Well, I mean, I'm I glad mean, I could show it to you. Good, good news for anybody with a fucked up pituitary gland. There are options. Okay, treatable. Surgery. Ooh. There is also hormone therapy. Okay. There's also radiation therapy. <laughs> if your pituitary's fucked up. Radiation? How's that yeah. gonna help anyone? I've, I mean, I, I can't tell you. I'm no expert. I'm, I'm just Dr. Google over here. But, um, you know, se se seems, like, seems like Joe's a little out of the know when it comes Matt to- Matt has options. Yeah, Matt has options. If his pituitary's currently <laughs> fucked up. Which, yeah, if, if it continues to be, he could go down that Joe Rogan route. He could become he could the next become Andrew Tate, who probably right, also like, has his pituitary gland fucked up. Right. Interesting. All right, check it out. We've got a bunch of, like, kind of games and goofs we got. You said you have to leave at 3.30? Yeah. Okay, so time. let's... We got all kinds of fun goofs here. So, okay, let me go. I mean, I don't... The beef with Drake, I'm sure you've talked a lot about Drake! it. Um, I want, did want to touch on that, and then we'll get into the games, I guess. Okay. So is it, I mean, Drake's been Drake. thinking about you. Now, you're not a Drake fan. This is the lore going into this. There's some records I'm a fan of. There, there are a lot of songs I'm a fan of. I He's mean, got great singles. Told, yeah. The the number of people who I'm a fan of, mm. it's very few and far between. Okay. You know, often, often when it comes to a lot of the modern artists I review, I can't afford to be a fan of anybody because once you're, once you're that, you know, you, 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 you can't, uh, uh, you, can, Bro, you, you can't. You can't. Long motherfucking. Thank you. you. are all Thank over you. Sorry. my shit. I was like, Sorry. I was like, Sorry. what? It, no, it's fine. It just shocked me. You like, can't. This is like right next. To you me. can't record. Like, you can't. You can't review someone's music in an unbiased manner. And I have to save my biases for white power music. I see that. I, I have to. I have to <laughs> hate on white power music. I can't just you know blindly hate other music. I need to save that for any music uh, made by people who are pro white. Okay, that's yeah. fair. So the the story is, you made a video. Right. Saying that Drake slid into your DMs, mm -hmm. and this is all fabricated. The fact that he slid into my DMs was true. The DMs right, that right, we right, right. showed were fabricated. Okay, so he slid. Okay, hold on. Hold you on. thought you were the only goofster. All right, hold on. I'm gotta, a, I'm a goofster too. Um, I got some goofs. Hold on, hold on. I want to find the original. 
Uh, Find the original one? The one that he actually sent you. Yeah, the one that he actually sent me that he shared. Here it is, here it is. Instagram story. So Drake actually DM'd you this. Right, he actually DM'd me that. He says, your existence is a light one. Yeah. And the one is because you are alive. Now, if he doesn't like me, wouldn't, wouldn't the, wouldn't me being alive be a detriment to my score? Wouldn't he be less generous because I'm alive? I guess, I guess to him, a one is like, you know. Wouldn't I be, a, wouldn't I be a 10 if I, if I was dead? Potentially, yeah, that could, that could change things. Yeah. He says, and somehow wife the black girl. Right. So he's actually deep into lo- your life sport. Yeah, he's, he's like, I don't he's think Google, most people he's Googling know. my personal information. I don't think most of your fans are aware of the, you know, ethnicity of your wife. Right. Because you're, you're very private. Right. But he does know that. Yeah, he's, he's weird. And he knows your cadence. He speaks like you. Yeah, he's, uh, he's using my scoring system. And he's, I'm feeling a light to decent, which is kind of yeah. what you say. Right. One on your existence. So right. this is like, he's mad. He's like salty. Yeah. So kind of so what do you what's going through your mind? And I, and you and I, le- and I left him on red. Ah, ah yes. he was expecting you to try to. So what do you think? I mean, this is like this must have been so unexpected. Yeah, when I got this, this was like um, this was uh, like midnight. This he must be on West Coast time. This was like midnight on a Wednesday. And I was working out of my garage and I just, you know, was looking at my Instagram and I saw that I had a message from him. And, um, you know, I just, I screenshot it and I sent it to a bunch of my friends who were just like, this is not real. This cannot, no. This yeah. is not, this, you, you made this up. And I was like, no, I, I sent it to maybe like half a dozen people. I was like, look at this. This is, well, what the fuck should I do? And, um, you know, I just sat there and I thought about it and, um, you know, I thought about the morals of the situation. Obviously, you don't just want to share private DMs to the internet. That's, that's bad form. Personally, in this situation, I wouldn't mind because, like, he's he's sending you an unsolicited hate <laughs> message. He is, but simultaneously, it's like, I also thought in my head that's what he would want, you know? Yeah. And, and I think, like, given his profile and given my profile, there would have very much been sort of, like, the inevitable reaction of, like, this is fake. You made nobody no, would have believed. No, it. no way. Drake messaged this to you. Yeah, you know. So because that was sort of the presumption, I, I, I got what you probably get a lot of the time. I got content brain. Mm. So you know, something happens to you, and immediately you're like, yeah. "How do I turn this into content?" Sure. So <laughs> I was like, since people are going to think the message from him is made up anyway, let's just make one up, and then and since and since he watches. He's he'll, a big he'll, fan. he'll see a video that says Drake DM'd me and he'll watch it and he'll see it's a funny inside joke. So, so fucking brilliant because you were right that he expected you to share it. And I think his idea was like, oh, nobody's going to believe him. Yeah. Or and you baited him so good. Or either, either not believe me or he'll see me on camera mad. Mm-hmm. Oh, you called me a light one. Drake! You know, um, <laughs> see me angry or see me like, you know. Uh, firing shots at him or being bitter or whatever. And I thought that like, I thought honestly, even though Drake does have a reputation for being a little bitter and, you know, sort of vindictive sometimes, I thought he would see the video and think it's funny. Right. And then maybe DM me and just be like, that was pretty funny. I thought you were going to talk about the DM that I sent you, but instead you did this silly thing. That's pretty cool. I I thought he would maybe want to chat after that and just kind of be friendly or just, you know, see see that there was no malice coming from my end because Mm. obviously I don't spend the video attacking him. No. You know, I didn't didn't necessarily expect him to do what he did. Dude, this was one of my favorite stories of the year. And what I loved about this is because when I watched your video the first time, I was like, Drake seems fucking awesome. Like, this DM (laughs) rules. I was like, yo, Drake is kind of like... Super cool. He's so, a nice guy. So you you fabricated this DM exchange. He said, Make him seem nice. Dude, I, I was a huge Drizzy fan after this. He says, Anthony, it's Drizzy. I know we don't see eye to eye about music and that you're not the biggest fan of mine. Thanks for the kind words on Take Care. And if you're reading this, though, but it, it is what it is, you know. Can always hope you'll like the next one. But I'm, Smi- Smiley emoji. Smiley, yeah, yeah. But I'm not messaging you about your video. I'm actually messaging you because I found a really great vegan cookie recipe that I love you to try. It. Wait, hold on. I have to find it in my bookmark. Here it is. <laughs> I'd really appreciate it if you could give this a spin and let me know if it's worth trying myself. Appreciate you. Drizzy out. Some people have made the recipe on TikTok. 
and it looks it looks like it came out pretty good. Did you just find this on the internet and copy paste? Uh, my my editor did. They yeah. I I had I had the idea, and I said like I, I I it was it was sort of a choose your own adventure thing. I said to them, um, shout out to Austin. I said to them, um, we can either do a cookie recipe as a fake DM, or we could do Drake messaging me to ask about like what can he say to this girl that he has a crush on? And then I give him advice on like what to say to the girl. Mm. Um, and and Austin went to, no, we gotta go cookie recipe. And this I said, was, okay, uh, you know, just, I, I said, I screenshotted the DMs and I said, use this as a base for the Photoshop mm -hmm. and just throw the, throw the recipe in there. <laughs> and um, uh, you know, whatever you find on the internet. And that's how that came together. And so you put this video, and I'm sure all your fans just thought it was some kind of wacky. Yeah, they joke. just thought it was some silly stuff because yeah. on the Fantano channel, I'm, you know, I, I, I very often will shit post or just sort of like, you know, give very inauthentic or sort of silly opinions on things, just sort of like throw people off. There's a lot of serious opinions on the Fantano channel too and commentary, but uh, every once in a while I'll do a silly video just to, you know, kind of uh, be tongue in cheek or be, be, you know, whatever. And so within two hours, Drake, yeah. who is apparently. A huge fan of yours, right? Um, posted this story, mm -hmm. which presumably he was like, "Nah, this is what I said to him." Yeah, that's really what which happened. Kind of like outed himself as kind of a big dummy because this makes him look like such a fucking douche and gives you a ton of clout. Drake! So, in terms of chess, I, I mean, I I appreciate it. You know, I mean, thank you at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I don't have to, like, you know, uh, get into this for, like, clout reasons or anything like that. But, uh, you know, si since then, we, we've had we've had positive exchanges. You know, positive. <laughs> you've, you've spoken to Drake since then? We, we've I'll, I'll say we have we've had positive exchanges, you know, not 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 to the level of logic. We're not like on the phone besties. And I'm you guys DM'd. Him. Uh, we've, we've, we've had exchanges. You don't want to say, you don't, I don't, I don't want to say, but it's, it's been positive okay. where, you know, it's like, there's no, there's no, there's no bad blood there. there you okay. Know, there's, that's there's nice. No animosity. That's nice. I love to hear that. Yeah. He's probably feeling bad because you just fucking clowned on him so bad. Like this, this YouTube music reviewer got the best of Drake, 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 Drake. So, but there you go. Oh, by the way, and the best part, I mean, how many followers? He's got 119 million followers. He basically promoed you to. You have 500,000. I mean, what a L. Yeah, I got like, I, I think I got like 20K new followers that day. <laughs> That's like, awesome. I, just off of him sharing that, it was preposterous. Well, there it is. Um, by the way, you called him a groomer. I don't know if you guys have discussed that on in the DM. That was, that was not a, uh, a part of the discussion. It says, oh, wait, what is this? Is this no, just, that was that, that's somebody else's. You meme. retweeted this. Uh, that that was just that was just a funny meme. I didn't know. Uh, I I don't recall the groomer. Text oh, here, with, here. Uh, it's just this part. Yeah, that's that's just that part. That's Do you think he's a groomer? Part. That we're talking about the Millie Bobby Brown thing, or him dating like his niece, or what? What was it? I, I girl, he like knew. he has he has a history of having some contact with teenagers that people seem to be kind of I don't know. I guess uh, uncomfortable Uncomfy. with yeah. it's it's a little it's a little odd it's a little weird. I mean, I, I guess I'll say this: like if Drake is such a, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I, I guess in the in the wake of Me Too, we've seen all types of people, you know, um, uh, fall from grace because of their very you know bad behavior and rightfully so. Um, you know, I guess I would like to think that if there was anything super scandalous out there about him, like you know, if he was stupid enough to send underage girls DMs that could potentially yeah, incriminate him. Yeah. You know, maybe it would have come out by now. That's but, a fair uh, assumption. You know, I guess but we'll, you never know. You know, you, then, and that's the thing. You never really know. And I don't want to make any presumptions of the guy or say anything uh, defamatory or something like that. But I think, um, you know, sort of like go off the presumption that he is most definitely a pedo. You know? Oh, sorry. No, <laughs> no, he's not. That was a joke. I, there's no evidence that that anything like that happens. Purely joke. <laughs> Not but even I mean, speculative. But, obvi but obviously, Not again, it's adult. like it's it's obviously widely acknowledged and understood. And you know, even guys like Tyler, the creator, have sort of like you know thrown out like a sub in a song, like "Oh Drake, I have a millie for you" or whatever. You know, a million or a you know so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, I, I think uh, I, I I think it's something that I hope that he in his career you know continues to distance himself just, from yeah. and just you know behaves. Yep. But simultaneously. 
I don't know what, you know, was sort of like going on in his head um, with the new record that he just put out with 21 Savage in terms of like the shots at Megan, uh, which obviously Tori that did Tori not ended age up well. Being. That didn't age yeah. well. That didn't age well. And then he had, um, uh, you know, the shots uh, against, what was it Serena? Uh, that he was, uh, I'm trying to remember, like her significant other because ah. Drake had gone on a couple dates with her at one point. Hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, which I think would have made for an interesting couple. I mean, you know, Drake and a, tennis champion uh together sure. but uh you know I, I guess he sort of threw some shots at her significant other and you know maybe he's sort of like the bitter ex in that situation i don't know but you know either way bad looks i, I don't bad, know why, i don't know why he throws out so many bad looks yeah so you know what i mean drake uh just fucking chill bro oh, why is it this ohanian i don't know how to pronounce it he's like one of the co-founders of reddit right yeah yeah this Serena williams husband hmm. I actually connected with him once i don't remember for what but yeah, he's a, you know, he's super successful. He should just enjoy his success. Exactly. Why you got to be so pressed, bro? You went from being a character in a wheelchair. I mean, nothing's wrong with that. It's just a funny image. He's an actor. Yeah. Went right. from being an actor on, you know, a, a drama show to being bitter about, you know, uh, various. Sending various you hate things. DMs. And send, sending uh, music reviewers hate DMs. <laughs> As, you know, and like, God bless uh, all of our. Um, all of our fans who are in wheelchairs, but uh, this is a funny image. Let's not pretend like it's not, right? Can we not pretend? I'm gonna get this tattooed on my chest, bro. That'd be a statement. <laughs> anyway, let's get on to the game. So uh, thank you for the, uh, thank you for the Drake <laughs> lore. Yeah, no problem. All right, we have a bunch of meme songs we want you to review. Okay. On this show, we have a lot of goofy kind of unbelievable songs that we keep playing yeah we got have, like some good running gags we've got five here okay okay i'm gonna play them for you mm -hmm. and just on, be honest okay yeah and ready uh, for full honesty yeah i know you always are radical honesty now this one comes from r kelly who's you know a great singer oh jesus christ uh are you familiar with this tune play it up so this is uh called passports mm. he is on tour in ethiopia uh here you go I got on the plane to come out here. Me and my girl broke up. Yeah, we broke up. The ladies are excited about that. Oh, yeah. The beat is, I'm feeling it too. Right. It's a good melody. Mm hmm. And it was over something really, really silly. Yeah. Something we shouldn't have broken up over. But it is. It is what it is. We broke up. And here I am. In Ethiopia tonight. <laughs> He's in jail, of course, for Question. sex trafficking and right. imprisonment. Is there right. anybody out right. there single? Yes, we will. That broke up with a man and they looking for somebody else right now. Gotta be Shout out to the Ethiopian TV channel on YouTube. I mean, gotta be single. Good angles. Where else would we see this? Single ladies, put your hands the on the This is the only place. Yeah, this so is I a deep cut. You. Right. Shout out to the keyboard player, too. I think we single handedly blew this song so up. But hold on, the I'm best part's good. Single ladies, single ladies. Now, I would like to get to know you and talk to you and have a drink or something and we can just have something to eat and just... But at the end of the conversation, at the end of the conversation, I'm going to want you to come back to America with me. Mm -hmm. I know I am. Mm -hmm. So you got to be willing to split the difference. Come to America and see me. I come out here to see you. Ethiopia. But it's so hard to get back and forth, so hard to get back and forth. Problem. How am I gonna get you from Ethiopia to America? Right. Let me think. Let me think. He has a solution. It's coming. You haven't seen this? Oh my god, I'm so excited. Yeah. 
thinking, well, yeah, it's a big problem. I got it. He's got it. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, <laughs> would you like to come back with Rob to America? Because you need shots to go from a right. country to right. America, yeah. Do you have your passport? To immigrate. Did you get your shots? Wow. Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? And again, he was arrested for human trafficking. Right. It's an interesting coincidence. I wonder if the... I love the background singer. Oh, fire. So, I fucking love this song. I'm. Was this rehearsed? I guess now, my, that's a hotly debated. Yeah. Now, in my opinion, I think he took the show on the road. Mm. These guys think it was improvised, mm. but could I, just been improvised for that date specifically. That's what the, that's what a lot of people think. But to me, it's like he's put a lot of time. He knows about the immigration process. He put the time into it. He right. knows about the shots. You 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 think he's going from country to country and swapping out the the you know whatever whatever place whatever location that he's in and sort of offering an american trip to you know i think ethiopia I think may, potentially zambia this, this germany wherever I, I think probably he he preys on more of the poor african countries i, I think he would. sure i mean any anybody who he can sort of lord over yeah this was one of our top selling merch items of last year by the way <laughs> Um, um, you know, my, uh, my, my opinion, my expert opinion is I, I feel like the, the, the music's about at an eight, but the lyrics are, are at a not good. So I'm kind of torn. <laughs> well, we need a, we need a rating. So we're, we're, I, I would, I would say we're landing at about maybe a decent three, maybe a three. three. Yeah. So, so you're saying the lot, the melody is nice. The, me the melody and the music and the drummer was killing it. Background singer was on point as well. Right. Who may have been trafficked from whatever country they were at previously? <laughs> right, right, right. They, that that background singer, yeah. maybe sort of. Does from anybody want to join my band tonight? <laughs> right, you become a member of the band yeah, yeah. as soon as you you join up. So, um, but the lyrics is it what he, is it that what he's saying? Because his singing is beautiful. Right. Is it the content content of what? Yeah, he's it's a saying? very creepy content. Okay, okay. So that, that 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 that. Yeah. Okay, a three. Yeah, I would give right. it a now. I am not a critic. I will give this a seven, but uh, <laughs> I'm no critic. I love this song, and but okay, I'm glad that you saw that. Hmm. Here's another one. This one comes from uh, Logan Paul had a crypto project last year. Yeah, I heard about that. Dink doink. It's it's gone really well, right? Well, it's so made, no, there's one. There, there's a new one that he's getting shit about the Coffeezilla. Yeah, but this was from last year. It was a crypto project called Dink Doink. Is anybody in? Does anybody <laughs> have any? Logan Paul NFTs that works on your production crew? I <laughs> wish, man. Bro, if is, they that, is that a sponsor? If they did, they'd be, they'd be retired by now. Is that a sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> Logan Paul NFTs? Well, 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 what's interesting, and, you know, everybody put their money in to this mm. dink doink, and then all of a sudden, it just went to zero. Like, oh, really? Crazy coincidence. That's never happened to end an NFT it hasn't, project it before. Hasn't. But anyway, here he made this theme song for the dink doink coin, mm. and I'd like you to uh, view it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's Ding currently at. Uh, sorry, I just. Uh, sorry, what? How, what? How does it's this not express even, it's not the numbers? Cent. It's not even a cent. Oh no! Well, <laughs> well, here would be a cent. It's a fr yeah. It's a fraction it's of a about, fraction. It looks like a, a billionth of a, of a cent. fraction. <laughs> for, cent. for the chart, you should go to the uh, the max, hit, hit max at the top right. <laughs> so here is the history of Dink Doink Coin. Um, and so it was never even a cent to begin with. No. Well, you know what? What a lot of crypt. Those because he they make like a hundred trillion right so, um. It's still a lot of money I think and so they do these weird things but yeah it's down to oh it's weird, yeah so here here it here it is uh, sorry to interrupt you there who who decided on the South Park aesthetic Logan I'm Paul yeah. as far as I am aware is the mastermind behind this project got it yeah he's just a big fan of South Park. 
any singing too. Coin. Want you to dink on my face, take a doink on my chest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dink doink, you're my favorite coin. Why don't you come on over? They should sue him for this. I, I honestly, I it totally doubt for looks, that. It honestly, to God, looks like a South Park. You know, that's an interesting legal issue, like because he's, they're not using the characters but sure. they are using the art stuff using i the wonder if that is it's like artistic it's like artistically speaking a deep fake like what, what if somebody used a deep fake of you to endorse that's a, a really that's a really really good point yeah like the way that it looks it looks like matt and trey made a video to get people to buy up into an nft scam that's a really good point and i and I'm, i don't think it's too late for them to sue them too either maybe sue. if they are watching this Re making a recommendation for yeah uh, uh, this is not legal advice this is legal advice to them. Why don't you come on over? Take pictures of my feet. Yeah, yeah. Ding doink, you're my favorite. Even the humor style. Take my little sister to the prom. Don't doink her, please. Ding doink, you're my favorite kind. You're my favorite kind. You're my favorite kind. You know what? Here, I'll, I think Matt and Trey Parker were involved in this project. I'm just saying that just because that? it makes his defamation because like I'm not involved. So if he if I, we can show that he convinced people that South Park is involved, you, that you can show then he's you can show so you can I'm, show it so here. You can show this in court, Matt and Trey. Yo, South Park is involved in this token. I'm going to buy it because I trust them. <laughs> so that could be useful in court. <laughs> And, and yet the numbers never went high. Never, never. They just went down. No, maybe, maybe after this it went higher for a second, but yeah, mostly. Down. You turn my wallet into a penthouse. That part is true. It did, it did turn his wallet into, he got rich off of it. Oh, yeah. They're going to the moon, of course, was a crypto right, nod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dogecoin, that sort of thing. Yeah. Why don't yeah, so, you? So, so that's Dink Doink. Um, left, on a, left on a cliffhanger. <laughs> By the way, this is actually the thumbnail. Yeah. With the shiny ass teeth. Um, <laughs> what do you think? I can't believe you didn't make my teeth like fucked up in the. You should have. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. Dude. I thought about it. I can't. To be honest, <laughs> I thought about it. At least you thought it. about it. I didn't want. Uh, to do actually, actually, I like. Um, Jeez, uh, it's I, kind of a fire beat, I think. Yeah, it's kind of a fire beat, and ding dong, it's my favorite kind. It's catchy. Uh, you know, uh, again, I, I feel like I'm feeling about maybe a seven on the music, but, Ooh. but then, uh, you know, it had like a nice emo trap kind of vibe to it yeah. going on. But yeah. the, but then you had kind of the scamminess of, the, yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna, I give this a point zero 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 one seven four three one out of ten wow there it is to the moon with this rating yeah once again music is good the content questionable yeah well wow. yeah. okay interesting so the meme songs are having a rough time here today but mm. this one i think the content is good okay it's wholesome good on this one there's nothing wrong this one is a iconic song Mm. It's called That's America to Me. Okay. And I think you're... I do love some blind patriotism. You're going to love this one. <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to start it from the top here. I don't want yeah, to... Yeah, of course. You want the tension <laughs> to, build, to build on the intro. Yeah, it's all good. That's America to me. Is that how it goes? Exactly. Dude. Okay. You're right. I nailed it. I've never heard this before. <laughs> I was like, never fucking heard this. I was like, have you heard this? Nope. Mom and dad and Apple. Sorry, there's just some comments I need to read. Uh, I see a lot of people saying this new South Park NFT seems really interesting. Mm. So, South Park it made an NFT called Dink Doink. Did you all hear about it? Mm. <laughs> I just want to get him sued so, so bad. Sounds like something that <laughs> sounds out of character for them. But but, uh, but there it is. It's mm. unmistakably South Park NFT. Hmm. Maybe I can still invest. Mom and dad and apple pie. Baseball games and picnics in July. That's that guy's mustache is good. That's America 
fight Even that dude's mustache has molested kids. A pride that only freedom understands. That's America. That's America. That's America to me. I did nail it. How yeah, did I you know? know? You nailed How it. How did I fucking I know? I legit was. How did I know? And choreography. Right. That's America. There's a budget too in this. I don't know where. Right. Standing in defense of rights. Defense of rights. Not afraid to give her all to fight. Yo, karate. Yeah, that's that's what they teach American foot soldiers. <laughs> that's America. That's America. He's got so much charisma. So you, me, me. There's not a key change. He says a land of diversity, but I don't see one. I see everybody on that stage is white as shit. Oh, never mind. Fuck me in the ass. There, this is diversity. That's it. That's it. As long as you respect God, it's diverse. Families that stand and say, Family values. <laughs> That's America. That's America. That's America to me. That's America. That's America. That's America to me. So, so. I mean, wholesome top subject matter. Yeah. Beautiful singing voice, top level ten. choreography. 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10. Come on, be honest. It's flawless. This isn't a joke. It's flawless. It's flawless. So you're giving this a perfect 10? Yeah, giving it a perfect as 10. As far as singles go, how many 10s have you handed out? Uh, uh, as far as singles? I don't know. I, haven't really, I don't really score a whole lot of singles. This is, this is the rare occasion in which I've scored a single. Okay, so America's leading the way. We have two more I want to show you. Andrew Tate, of course, uh, I'm sure you're aware. He, did you know he had a short music career? Yeah, we, we uh, did a Fantano channel reaction to it. Is this Mr. Plenty or this is this the, the other Sugar Daddy? One? Oh, Sugar, okay. No, sh I haven't done a reaction to Sugar Daddy yet. Okay, Hold on a so second. Hold on I, a second. I think Sugar Daddy he made private shortly after or something. I need to... Well, uh, he privated it? Why would he do that? <laughs> yeah, why, why would he private this? <laughs> I, might, I, might do, I might do a fun little follow-up. Yeah, you uh, should. Because uh, the, the, the first the first video did so well. So so I got I got content brain. Yeah yeah no absolutely you're gonna want to watch this. Yeah. Girl look good. I don't wanna lie. Girl look no, good. I, <laughs> fun. I don't wanna try. I'll take you to Dubai. Put you in the sky. Money on a plane. Put you in the girl, sky. I wanna ride. Right, you. Nice. Get a little high. But if I'm on the grind, then I probably won't reply. I'm the type of guy. B bitches on the side. Yeah. I'ma spend the yeah. money. We can spend a little time. All you gotta do is ask me. Yeah. Ask me. I can make you look classy. <laughs> make you look classy. Make <laughs> you walk past me. Make you walk past me. I to get you in my backseat. Put you in my backseat. They call me Mr. Plenty. 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 Yeah. Check the leather on the Bentley. Bentley. Check your friends will get friendly. Maybe Bentley. Sugar daddy. Sugar daddy. Yeah. Sugar daddy. Sugar daddy. It's rare. Yeah, it's it's really long. Like I mean, three what, minutes. What, what's what, what I find weird about this video? What I find weird about this video is that often in rap videos, you will have a handful of different shots, and across those shots, you will have a costume change because obviously, okay. like you have a rapper that wants to, like you know Flat. they want to showcase their outfits and their chains and you know their style and so on and so forth. Andrew Tate has gone from one haircut to another. Is that he has yeah. like this weird little short like English buzz? Fuck yes, and then he goes full bald, and he's kind of bouncing back and forth between being bald and just that is having very that, interesting. That, that's uh, the game. Reason. So here he's full bald. Yeah, sometimes he's full bald. Yeah, then sometimes he got a little like, and sometimes he got a little on the top, yeah. which I, I don't get. It's kind of jarring. And this guy has a shirt as a dress. So what are we what are we feeling in terms of uh, the musical credentials here? Yeah, this this is this is mid. The beat sucks. The vocals are the flow. Amazing. The flow. There's not a lot of flow to it. A bit, but call me Mr. Plenty. Oh wait, there's. I'll put you in my Bentley. Wait, the best part is here. At, apparently at 1:30. Let me, let me make sure I, you see that to give it a fair review. Of course. Yeah. Girl look good. Yeah, I know. Girl look good. 
Incredible Sugar backup daddy, vocals. Right. Yeah, we we play that sound by a lot. Get your girl. 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 That was kind of fresh what you did back there. Such a smooth voice. Such a smooth, yeah. beautiful. Puts me at ease. Yeah. <laughs> Makes me want to be sex trafficked. Yeah. <laughs> he he does he does if somebody said to me, What does a sex trafficker sound like rapping on a beat? Mm. It probably would be like I'll sex, I'll sex traffic <laughs> you. Get your girl. Get your girl. Room to Romania, I'll take good care girl, of you. Girl, it would girl. be somewhere in that bad cigarette breath <laughs> range. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> So what are we feeling? I, I, I would say we're feeling a, a, a negative three. Negative okay. Three on, okay. All right. Or whatever, whatever amount of, whatever amount of years Andrew Tate's going in the slammer out of ten. That'd be a really good. He, has, he, hasn't, he hasn't been sentenced yet. I think he's going to be doing at least fifteen, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm ready for me now. <laughs> Damn! I wanted to play you this Yoko Ono song, but it got claimed. Uh oh. That sucks. I've never seen this notification though. It says the owner allows the content to be used on YouTube. Oh, so is it still monetized? Uh, I'm not sure. Dude, I've Yoko's a woke before. queen, bro. That's awesome. Oh God, I, I'm, I'm 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 kind of a Yoko stan. Okay, I'm, so I'm then slight, slight maybe Yoko let's stan. pull it. Maybe maybe just open it on the phone, and he can listen to it because y'all know the war. What's what's the song? The war zone is what's called the war zone. Yeah, is it like a is it like a recent one? Um, it's not super old. It's, it's super within old. the past it was, 10 years. If, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, it's, it's probably... T- okay, show, show me this awful ass song. Should we just... Let, let's just listen to it, I guess, for a moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Let's do it. I want to hear it. Yeah. I can find you a good timestamp if you want. The owner allows content to be used on YouTube. See the... De- click the details. What does it say on that? I've never seen that either. Oh, let's see. I mean, can, I pl- can I play a Yoko banger? I love... I love Yoko. I'm going to play a Yoko... <laughs> it's Yoko. Okay. Uh, it says impact on the video. No impact. No impact. Channel not affected. Visibility. And monetization? Um, this channel I uploaded doesn't have monetization, so I can't check that. Okay. Well, are we going to hear it? Um, I th- are you going to play one? Do you, do you want do you, do you to search it up here? Or do you want me to play it off my phone? Oh, we can search it. Uh, it's called Walking on Thin Ice. Oh. Wait, you want me to search it? Okay, sorry. Yeah, search Because it it's going to get claimed too, I think. Okay, well, we don't have to do it. If it's That's what I'm afraid. Claimed. You know, it's like yeah, you do a three-hour I'll just play it. I'll just play it over my phone. Yeah. High budget. Yeah. 13,000 views after six years. John's mind it's, is going it's, to good it's, use. It's a deep cut. It's got a great beat. It's got a great dance beat. Oh, there was like a rogue frame in there. They didn't even edit it upright. Like, look at this. There's like a rogue frame there. You see that? Oh, that's weird. It's like Fight Club. <laughs> right. Maybe that was the that was the point of inspiration. This song is a lot better than the one. Oh, I believe it. This one's a bot. All right, here. Let me play you um, War Zone. Play it for Get me. Get your girl. By Yoko. Get your girl. Oh, no. Okay, here. I'll just I'll play it for you. Here. Play it for me. Yeah. Elephant noises? <laughs> yes. This is avant garde. <laughs> Very. <coughs> Machine gun fire. <laughs> uh, it's got almost half a million views on it. Well, it's. I think we're responsible for that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little on the nose. <laughs> the. <laughs> The machine gun sounds are so bad. <laughs> oh shit! This song's awesome. John Lennon. Their balls. Oh, right. <laughs> if one of you upload it to a monetized channel, real fast, could play it. Yeah, it's that. It's that for the whole time. I mean, frankly, I, I find her voice haunting. I've always found her voice very like unsettling. Like in a compelling way. Like in, in, in an interesting way. Mm-hmm. In an interesting way. Well, For Warzone? It's, it's, uh, for off, off of what I heard, we'll, we'll, uh, 
we'll, we'll, we could we could say a seven out of ten for Warzone. Wow! It, it, could, it would be it would be a ten if there was actual machine gun fire in the studio. Okay, as opposed I see. to as opposed That's to stock. Guard. She's yeah. a coward for not doing. We that. we we need actual gunfire in the studio. <laughs> Zach, you're fucking crazy, dude. That's Wendy Williams. If she if she was game. if she was singing like that while firing a Glock. Okay. In the studio. That that'd be I think that would be that would, that would really bring the vibe of a war zone home. Well, John Lennon's uh legacy is in good hands there. Are you a fan of John Lennon? Uh I like John Lennon's stuff. Um I've uh, uh interviewed his uh son Sean on the show. Okay. As well. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Was that the one he abandoned or the one he loved? <laughs> That was uh, I, that, that was that, that was that was the one between him and Yoko that he loved. Okay. Yeah. Can, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, let me. Um, this is the. Last, I know you said it's three thirty, so I'm gonna do this really fast. Yeah. Okay. Go for do it. you need to leave right now? Yeah. Go for it. No. Tell me. Okay. So we all put together. We're confessing our guilty music pleasures. Okay. And I'll just be fast. I'll tell you what it is, and you okay. just give me your and snap. All right, tell me. Judgment. Tell my me. guilty music pleasure is Third Eye Blind. I fuck with them hard, bro. Um, actually, the the debut is really good. It's the debut album is insane, right? Gotta get my punk ass off the street. Yes. Like, so okay. Knock so, it all down. Get I graduate. Yes. So, it's like it's, there's bangers on the debut. So that's. Uh, Fantano approved. Yeah, the debut is Fantano. Okay, approved. okay. Hell yeah, dude. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, Zach's guilty music pleasure is Creed. Yeah, that's I'm, I can't. You can't get behind that. No, What's cannot. wrong, dude? What? Why? Just any kind of singing from the '90s or early 2000s that's just basically a shitty Eddie Vedder ripoff. So no. <laughs> like, you gotta admit though. Not no, from a I, singing standpoint, but the choruses and it's hook, the hooks are. I, I don't have to admit anything. I'm not admitting anything. <laughs> you, you have to admit that. Of on this one, Zach. So you don't like the soul patch singing? No. Okay. Do no. you? Are, do you, does Eddie Vedder get a pass? No, I don't. You don't even like, fuck whoa. with Pearl Jam. No, I barely fuck with Pearl Jam. Wow. So so he's really out on this I'm, one. I'm I, I, like when it comes to that era, it's more it's Smashing Pumpkins, it's Nirvana, it's um, yeah. I, I I would say Chris Cornell hits more in that realm, but I actually like Chris's singing. Yeah, yeah. as well. far as that soul patch singing, I like Chris Cornell. Zach or uh, Dan, you're like your my head. children. I just cycled through All three of your names. All my friends are brown and red. Boom, man. Yeah, I love that down, song. Down, 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 so down. Dan, I noticed your enthusiasm at uh, Fantano's denouncing of Pearl of Pearl Jam. Yeah, I, I've always been a Pearl Jam hater. Um, just that's most grunge, kid. frankly, is yeah, I'm not into in that style of singing. Uh, and Nirvana, are you gonna dis? You are you gonna say? Listen, I I, I respect Nirvana, but um, it, shit. What's grunge, your what's your fave? Grunge. What's your, what's what, what what's your era of that era? Like that. Creed. Not 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 of that era, but like what what is what? What are do your you like? What is even? your favorite personal era or vibe? If like you just don't fuck with that yeah. 90s grunge era at all. Uh, I've yeah. always been more on the punk side of things. Okay. Um, so the stuff that was going on, one of my favorite uh, bands, Fugazi, in the okay. early '90s. I, I and think stuff like that. Out of all the records that I have, that's one of the bands that I have the most records of. So. Fugazi. Yeah. Oh, so so he has hey. some street credibility. That's yeah. uh, Fugazi's great, top, but maybe a little close-minded. Top three band. I mean, you know, I he doesn't I, like I, Nirvana. I mean, yeah, I feel like you should, you should like Nirvana. Yeah. What's wrong? You know? with I, I don't dislike Nirvana. I just am not. They're not that important to me personally, you know. It, 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 I never had an era where like that music really meant a lot to me or anything. So it's got just, it. it's just always been like radio rock to me. I don't know. I got it. Oh, I got it. Which, which, like in in some ways it is, but isn't necessarily a bad thing in my view. No, again, I'm not. I'm not trying to shit on Nirvana. Nirvana's All right, well, Dan, fine. let's do your Nirvana's guilty fine. pleasure since you're since we're yeah. Uh, we, right. We gotta After hurry. saying that, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. <laughs> now listen, Dan's guilty pleasure. I'll just be straight up. I didn't even know this was embarrassing because I'm a huge fan of this band and everybody I know growing up is. So I'm just going to blurt it out. Maybe it's a California thing. Sublime. Uh, I've, I've actually been on a Sublime kick lately. There uh, we go. This, okay. This past, this past summer, I... I uh, Sublime's great. This past summer, I, uh, my, my cousin hit me up. Like this, th again, this, this was like, obviously, vaccines are out and people are getting out into the world a little bit more. Weather's warming up and my cousin hit me up out of nowhere and was just like... Hey, are you free this weekend? Me and my boyfriend are going to a concert. Do you want to come with? And I was like, what's the concert? And 
the concert was this band that's like pretty notorious for being a sublime cover band that mm -hmm. tours all over the East Coast. And I've been I've been basically avoiding them since college. Like, you know, so they, they do they, have a cringy reputation. You yeah, think? They, they've been around. Well, I mean, uh, among music nerds, yeah, you okay. know. So it's like they, they've been playing venues pretty regularly since like you know twenty years ago. Not the so. cover band, but like the original band. Oh, um, I, I would say among music nerds, Sublime isn't taken all that seriously. Okay, no, no they're not. And okay. yeah, I, I went out to go see him live, and I mean, it was it was fun, you know, and and everybody was having a great time, and. Um, yeah, I remember a lot of their songs from the radio when I was a kid. You know, I they, they were like they were in the air. They were all over the place. And yeah. um, you know, I think uh some of the content of their music in terms of like, you know, the appropriation aspects have has like aged very badly frankly, but there's, there's still like some good songwriting there. Okay. There it is. Not too embarrassing there for you, Dan. Yeah, it's it's uh, not it's, so it's it's some pretty decent white boy reggae. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> the only total denunciation so far is for Zach with Creed. Right. <laughs> Coming up is AB's. I don't even know what this means, AB, but it says LFO Summer Girls. I thought oh, we were doing geez. a song, and not like an artist at first. So that's a song. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar. Oh, I'm familiar. Oh yeah. I, 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 who I, song? Who sung it? LFO. LFO. Oh. Okay. I I, I, I did a series on my YouTube channel. There's a couple different videos <laughs> where I. I listed the worst songs of my adolescence, and that that was on the list. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, not not now, not to say my adolescence, as in like I listened to it when I was a kid. I just remember it from when I was a kid. Yeah, okay, okay. that was easily one of the worst songs I've heard in my life. And so, AB. <laughs> Oh no, it's it's uh, it's fucking horrible, but I love it. Okay, it's so bad. I mean, one you, of the you don't recall this song, or I actually I have. I it's, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's, that, it's that weird boy band song where they're like Chinese food makes oh, me sick. Fuck. <laughs> one, yeah, yeah the Chinese lyrics are for that fucking summer, horrible. For that summer, yeah, yeah. One of the lines is, yeah, I do. Stayed all summer, then went back home. Macaulay Culkin was at home alone. Wow, <laughs> that's, there's bars. bars yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fire. <laughs> okay, well, so this is a total denunciation, I think. Which, yeah. to be fair, means that your admission is a really good one. Well, hold, hold on a second. I'll, I'll say in the I'll say in the instance of LFO Summer Girls, it's it's sort of like Tommy Wiseau's The Room. You know, okay. it's it's one of those exactly. things within art generally. It's it's so bad it becomes. Is that what you meant, Avery? Yes, one hundred percent. Yes, the <laughs> yeah. amount of joy that it brings me when people hear it for the first time is that when they are like, wait, the lyrics said what? <laughs> Does the yeah, lyrics it, just it, rhyme? It makes, it makes you, you want it, it makes you want to die. There's yeah. a genre of music I call Shrek rock. And right. they're kind of the predecessor to that with yeah. like the fast talking, rhymey kind of what's swamp another, what's rock. another example of, of Shrek rock? Well, it would the the, the most famous one would be uh, Is it Greta Van Fleet? Smash Mouth. Smash Mouth is like oh, Smash quintessential Mouth. Shrek rock. Got it. Got yeah, it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. <laughs> yeah. What's their famous one from Shrek? They go uh, All Star. All Star. Yeah, yeah. That's like yeah. quintessent. That is Shrek. But that song is amazing. So you you approve of All Star? Yeah, All Star's a banger. All Star. Did you aim? did you see he like Heil Hitler recently at like a biker rally? <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> yeah, he's falling pretty hard, man. He's in the he's still stuck in the swamp. That's that's rough. <laughs> <laughs> he was like blackout drunk, Heiling Hitler on stage. It wasn't good. The Smash Mouth guy. Yeah, the Smash, Smash Mouth, Mouth guy. guy. It was a rough time for him. Olivia, I'm not sure this is controversial, but she says Selena Gomez. I think that's, In terms of, that's it, acceptable, isn't it? It's a guilty it? pleasure for sure. I, I feel like she's not necessarily esteemed as like the musical artist artist. She's more of like an actress. Right. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily put this on in the car if I'm trying to super impress someone. Oh, uh, well, sure. So that's, that's what I took as guilty pleasure. Got it. What do you think? Um, I mean, as far as like, I mean, it's like just some Disney pop, right? Disney you pop. Know? That doesn't sound good. I mean, that's like, you know, nice. it's not, it's not, there's worse things that you could listen to. It's not like, you know, okay. it's, it's, it's not toxic. It's not harmful. It's not weird. Okay. You know, okay. It's like, okay. I, I feel like there's a certain age at which listening to that sort of thing is okay. And people who grew up on that stuff still so, have, mm -hmm. still, still have like a soft spot in their heart for it. And so, so at what age does it stop being okay? I, I, I would say once you become a teenager, but again, and how old are you? Something, Olivia? I am 23. So you're not a, she's not a teenager. <laughs> but if it's something that you grew up she's, on. She has grown up and her music has, I think yeah. she has good taste. Are you, are, you are you talking about later cuts and stuff? Like, I'm, I'm talking about Rare, I, like Rare, the album. I thought it was good. Okay, there you go. But, but again, if it's, if it's something that like, you know, it was part of your musical diet during a formative there it age, is. it's fine. There it is. Uh, There's a lot of shit that I listen to that is, is quite frankly pretty bad, but because I listened to it when I was a kid, I still have like a soft spot for it. Like what you want to give us an like, example? Like that band Bush. 
Or, oh, yeah, Bush. Um, Wait, like, you like um, Bush, but you don't like Creed? Uh-oh. No, no, when I was a kid. When I was a fucking <laughs> child. But you still <laughs> fuck with it. Um, yeah, the song Machine Head. What the <laughs> fuck? That's the same machine. shit! But um, uh, also, uh, also um, uh, that, that band Mindless Self-Indulgence. Oh, fuck yes, like, dude. God, I listened, to that, I listened to that when I was a kid. And uh, like obviously now I can still like appreciate it when I think, when I put myself back into 14 year old brain mode, but, uh, <laughs> bro, when I was, when I was, when, when, when you're, when you're pushing 40, uh, bitches love me cause they know that I can rock. Like that's, <laughs> it, it doesn't, it doesn't hit as hard. You know what? Um, this is actually a, it's not, I don't like this music anymore. I'm happy to say I grew out of it, but mm -hmm. I owned Limp Biscuit albums. Yeah. So did I. You did? Yeah. Okay. So I wasn't the only I, one. I, I, I feel like <laughs> any angry or sort of like any teenage boy during that era looking for some kind of like, you know, suburban teenage boy looking for an outlet was into some kind of rap metal. Do you remember he did a rap song with Method Man? Yeah. That was <laughs> one was of the biggest crazy. singles. It was. I didn't yeah. know that. That was one of the big singles off the record. That was fucking insane. Like yeah. Limp Biscuit rapping with Method Man. It was yeah. so weird. At, at the time, people, I mean, obviously, like, probably some hip hop heads. And together now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. some hip hop heads were batting an eye. But, like, you know, the, the people who that music was meant to appeal to were cool with it. You know? Hell I mean, of a time. I, at that time, I liked that. I liked, um, I loved Rage Against the Machine. Uh, but during they're, they're highly, uh, they, they're, they were, they're but the thing is right? when you're 11, 12, you don't know the fucking difference, you know, right, right. when all you, all you know is there's an angry guy rapping over a rock song, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, so obviously as I've gotten older, I enjoy Rage's music still to this day, Yeah, but you know, when I was, when you're a kid, you don't really, you're not really delineated. You're not ready between. to take down the, uh, the, uh capitalistic uh, systems at 12. You know, like I, at, at the time the I was well aware of some of the content of their music and that it was like political in nature mm -hmm. but like you know i didn't necessarily see limp biscuit as corny i just saw it as like more yeah. angry yeah no at sort the time like he was cool music. yeah there was another band called nonpoint that i liked at the time i liked corn as well corn there was, there was, there was a lot of rap metal that i liked when i was a kid so um can't this one's cams i'm not sure how embarrassing this one is mm -hmm. it's a genre of music 80 to 90s norwegian black metal is that pretty niche? I mean, it, it could be cringe depending on sort of like the philosophical or the, the ideology of the band. A lot of, yeah, a lot of those guys have shown themselves to be pieces of shit over the years and they're like too self-serious. And racist. Yeah, exactly. So fuck them. But I, I like, um, like, the big one's Dark Throne. I still listen to Dark Throne a lot, but you can't yeah. listen to like shit like Varg Vickerness's bullshit anymore because he's been proven to be a piece of shit. You know, the thing is like, a lot of those people come from pagan backgrounds, or at least that's how they see themselves. And, you know, in their own minds, they're revolting against kind of this Christian encroachment upon their culture. Mm -hmm. On top of it, they live in very isolated, secluded areas where anything that's new or different to them is weird. Mm -hmm. So, of course, and, and of course, like, there's a lot of like uh, obsession with heritage for some of those people. So, you know, anybody coming from a different cultural background is seen as like, lesser than because you know th there's like a superiority complex so there. there's a little so this is actually potentially really white uh this is the white Th this supremacy this music is the white supremacy about. music i have so much of a bias so you have a little bit of a bias yeah, I, exactly and i, I will say I, I listen similar to you i listened to it as a kid without realizing the underlying context of the backstory behind a lot of it so i don't, I don't listen to it much of it anymore but yeah it was just an edgy formative thing at the yeah. time and, and you know and and to be fair there are some artists you know from uh that scene that you know, don't fuck with that ideology yeah, at all. Yeah, for sure. Or, or didn't make it a point in their music to have anything to do with it. You for know? sure. And, and as it has, uh, you know, become more of a point of uh, obvious polarization, uh, you know, have distanced themselves from it or have just continued to make sure that they have nothing to do with it. There, there are some people from that uh, scene who over the years have come out of the closet as well, mm. you know, it's a, but they, but they, you know, are still respected in the scene mm. and stuff. So, um, you know, uh, it... it just, just stay away from the assholes, essentially. There it is. Yeah, just do your homework when you're looking up bands. Uh, there's one more, Love. He lives in Sweden, so mm -hmm. this one's called Dude Mark. Dude uh, Mark, yeah. I figured since I'm Swedish, I had to represent, and I think you know what Dude Mark is, I'm guessing. I'm, un I'm unfamiliar. Dude Mark. Oh. There it young is. Young Lean and uh, Young Dudes, uh, kind of oh, punk oh, grunge. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, Isn't that like their punk band? Yeah, they, they got it, some bangers. They, they got some bangers. Yeah, though. it's very good, and I don't know if it's good if you, you don't, don't sound embarrassed at all. at all, though. Nah, I I mean, it, Young Lean 
if I were to just show Young Lean's song to anyone, I feel Young like they Lean? would be... Yeah, he, he's, like this, he's like Wait, this... Wait, are we talking about Young Lean? Because he's yeah. famous. Yeah, he has... What he's, what he's referring to is a side project punk band that he's in. Oh, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. I see. But which, Young which Lean has some pretty good tracks. Is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's really good. And I, I, I am a little bit embarrassed when I show just Young Lean in general, because I think, um, I don't know, it's very... An acquired taste, I guess. Are, are you talking about like over there? Is, is, no, he, is, 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 he, not, is he not worshipped like a god? Here he's wor worshipped by oh, I mean, American should stuff. Be. I mean, he's worshipped pretty much everywhere, I suppose. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Just people who haven't heard of him before. It's kind of... He should run for president over there. <laughs> I think I so, want, too. I want to ask you, actually, a question about Young Lean. Okay. Because when this song came out, I thought it was cool. I mean, I, I know it's mm. not the best music in the world, mm. but at the time, like, any of my friends who I knew who were into hip-hop... Okay. Thought it was the dumbest shit and we're like like dude this is embarrassing don't show me this shit right like that bad you know what i mean right. and so something like kyoto yeah. which came out um nine years ago right were you fucking with this or what do you think i was about not it? fucking heavy with young lean's early stuff i mean this is his most viewed I, song. I, I i guess i'll say this like i did mess with cloud rap generally I just think there were more interesting cloud rap artists. Okay, okay. You know, that, that actually brought some, maybe some better lyrics to the table. But like, I mean, I like the aesthetic. I get the aesthetic. <laughs> it looks you know, like, like love. It's, it's got a lot of, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of style to it. There is. You know, yeah, I mean, play, play some of it. I mean, uh, I, mean I, I mean, can't, yeah, yeah, okay, I can't yeah. Do don't, it. Don't, don't get in I trouble. I can't do don't it. Don't get in trouble. I'll, I'll say this, like, a lot of the production from that era, especially the Clans Casino stuff, was just amazing. Mm -hmm. you know, game changing beats, you know, but at that time, mm -hmm. You know, Young Lean is, you know, often championed while I think, unfortunately, um, a lot of people or a lot of younger listeners who, you know, uh, enjoy his stuff to this day have kind of like, you know, fallen off in terms of like also recognizing the contributions from like Lil B or ASAP Rocky in mm -hmm. terms of his early stuff, which I mean, I, I sort of understand because ASAP has kind of, you know, transitioned into other sounds as well. And Lil B isn't... Uh, you know, quite as popping as he used to be, but um, you know, I, I think uh, uh, there there should be acknowledgement of artists that I think have made more significant contributions mm. uh, as far as like the cloud rap thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, well there it is, Anthony Fantano, finally got all of his opinions, got all my opinions, and I made it here. Yes, you sir. Could, you, could, you could check me off your smash list. I heard you're going to a uh, Hassan's stream. Yeah, doing that tomorrow. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that he's super boring, bro. So just be prepared to sit <laughs> there. He, he wants he wants to go to the gym with me. Oh, for real? Yeah. You think? Can you bench? Can, are you? Can you bench a lot? Uh, I can bench. I don't know if you I. Think you think you can out bench him? Ben no, probably not. Can't probably can't out bench him. Oh, you're I don't going know to if he's benching. You're going to therapy gecko tonight. I'm going to therapy That's gecko awesome. tonight. So you're all your schedule is jammed. It's a whole it's a whole new media tour. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, Anthony Fantano, the busiest. Music nerd, he's on YouTube. You know where he is. I mean, are you? Do you have any projects? Still, you still on YouTube. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, uh, we're on Twitch. We're on TikTok. The Needle Talk. Um, we're just pumping out content all the time. There the, it is. The reviews are still the bread and butter, and that's what we're doing. Does anyone try to pay you off for a good review? Um, mostly just sort of like smaller people who are just like who who just kind of presume that like out of the gate that's how things work like, right how much do you pay for a review okay it's like, uh we don't you know? have you ever been offered did any of them ever offer you like an insane amount of money or anything like i don't know maybe some like fucking rich obscure weirdo like at one time not anybody anyone would care about but yeah. of course like i said no you know it's like there's never been an instance where like some guy like drake is like i'll pay you this for the review or i'll write your existence to light one you know it's like <laughs> nothing, nothing like that drake! there it is all right anthony thank you so much for coming by it was really nice to finally Got a chance to to meet face to face in the sure. chat. Uh, lots of love for you. Lots of uh, admirers here in the podcast. We're all fans of what you do, and uh, the audience loves you as well. So keep it up. Stay busy. That's what I'm gonna do. And um, we'll be watching. Thank you. So thank you guys. It's Friday. Happy Friday. Fuck baby. Fuck. Woo. Um. Anything going on next week, Dan? The tease. Uh. Our guest next Friday. It, it, never mind. I'm Olivia's going b -b 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 to me. So. Not okay. It's not, not confirmed. completely confirmed. But we might have a very interesting guest next week. 
Um, I don't even know what you guys are talking about. I'll tell you after the show. Yeah. Hopefully it'll work out. Ooh. And um, we have somebody on Monday calling in? Oh, Olivia's uh, lipping to me, but I still don't know what it is. Uh, John Buckley, the watch TikTok dude, is calling in on Monday. Oh, fun. I love yeah. him. Yeah. Big fan. <sighs> Olivia's typing it to me. I'll leak it. Oh, that is a... Okay, yeah. Yas. We can't say it? Why can't we say it? Because I guess it's not... It's... We'll talk about it. After All right, we go off. thank you guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you all on Monday for another action-packed week of content, laughs, spoofs, goofs, bomb threats, and... Um, no? What? One of those? Decapitations? No? Hostage videos? All right. <laughs>